Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Once Upon a Witch Life. As always, we would absolutely love and appreciate it if you could like this video, subscribe to our channel, and click that bell so you never miss a video. And without another moment's delay, we will commence the weekly reading of the comments. First up, the pretzel argument really just solidifies the fact that Gideon and Kremi are truly a married couple. <laughs> 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 Torbeck's new rhyme exists. Me. Why is it raining in my room? <laughs> Quote, you guys are top tier across the whole board. I need this series to be a TV show. By the way, adore the new bean footage. Yes. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. And Thank lastly, you. favorite moments. The physical comedy of Mace flash dancing, Derek hissing and running off screen, and Andy clotheslining Mike with his penis. <laughs> All of Mike's meta references to James Bond, Rich's beautiful one-liners, Wahoo, and I may be dead, but I'm also Italian. <laughs> Andy's dedication to not pulling out his clown character when he fu wasn't fully prepared. So. Thank you so much for your comments. Make sure you all watching leave a new comment this week and maybe you can be read as well. And don't forget to check out our Patreon and the merch shop. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm gonna go ahead and roll that beautiful bean footage. Whoa. Once upon a witch light hour, the sleeping queen stirred in her tower and through grand halls past lock and key came to her slumber dreams of three. The first brought laughter filled with fright the second, love defiled by spite. The third, a world of pure delight. She welcomed these, they were her own. But soon from porcelain lips a groan, her silvery dreamscape now forsaken, to pain from which she'd not awaken. Something blighted had come hither, foul as nightshade creeping thither. From yon the grave-like curse did wither. The little prince wept in his spire, his wounded heart had one desire. A ballad from the dreaming queen could turn his maelstrom mind serene. He vowed her rescue, speech sincere, but toys would be his shield and spear, and so he scoured for one full year. In springtime wreathed in parenthood, the prince first found a toy of wood, a doll set, beasts and wild things. But listen close and each one sings. A song of child, owl, and bear. A song that calls the spirits there. A song for monsters with much hair. When summer heat steamed like a kettle, the prince then found a toy of metal. A rocking horse with ashen mane. Around its neck was draped a chain. Its horn and eyes and nose shoot flame with mighty hooves and sturdy frame. No better steed one could proclaim. He searched from autumn's harvest throne. The prince then found a toy of bone. Lettered blocks stacked to the sky when turned to words could only lie. Deceit known to the hounds of hell makes for a potent hex or spell of souls, of sin, of shadow fell. Through winter's chill from peak to pass, the prince then found a toy of glass. Marble spun in measured motion, like careful thought or certain notion. Each glinting cat's eye seeing all, from stars beyond the cosmic sprawl, to inner strength and mind's recall. When season stopped, the final day, at last the prince found halves of clay. He shed a tear, this would not do. His favorite toy was split in two. It stank and had a horrid face, but in his heart held special place. Through toil this crack he would erase. The day has come, no time for rest. The fateful toys placed in a chest with stripes of white and stripes of red, just like a big top by his bed. The little prince prepares a flower for either outcome, sweet or sour, and makes a wish for love, for power, once upon a witch light hour. Give me a minute, I lost my songs. <laughs> there they are. <clears throat> you can cut that, right? Yep, I always do. Okay. <clears throat> Once upon a time in Prismere, five heroes became members of the Soggy Court and set out to free Morgo, the former Knight of Warts, from imprisonment. 
Though their hearts were in the right place, the Feywild had other plans, and they succumbed to the concentrated witch light in the air around them. They were able to retrieve the key to the cell and perform a trial by combat, but to no avail as Morgo was not mentioned during the battle. And it is here that we find our heroes, covered in the blood of a clown from hell. You stand before Morgo, realizing that you are unable to pull her from this cell. She takes a step back and slumps against the wall. Her head falls back and she crosses her arms and shakes her head. She says no words as she is clearly not frustrated, but disappointed. She's not mad. She's I'm disappointed. Just disappointed. <laughs> what happened? I don't, I, I don't understand. You did. Uh, Morgo just said uh, you didn't say my that name. You didn't say your yeah. Did, did, did you did you say the name in the in the circle or well, in, mean, the, in the of, arena in the hippodrome? It was sort of implied. I mean, I just assumed that. Like, I mean, why else would we be doing it? Am well, I still I, am I still beat up? Does anybody remember? If you had some I, bananas, I would say you're capable uh, of talking. Uh, in my defense, the reason why I didn't help is that a clown possessed my. F- Flesh and mind and blood and soul. And I didn't even realize we were trying to save Morgo. I, he just called me a bitch, and I thought that was just about <laughs> enough. I, I'd had it, you know? He must have really gotten at you. It must have been really hard to convince you to jeopardize this whole mission and have a great gladiatorial fight. He must have, he, gosh, he must be a devious mastermind. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, well, uh. He's not mad. You're, you're definitely like just kind of being a little, you know, casual, but callous by just saying that he called you a bitch. It had to have been it a lot the, deeper than that, It was the that, way right? that he had said it. You know, there's a certain tone he used that just really got under my skin. And then Torbeck laughed real loud, and it just really hurt in a different kind of way. Hey, Gricko, call Gideon a bitch. Uh, Gideon, you're a bitch. Oh, okay. Let's go back to the arena. We're going to break Morgo out right now, all right? You're coming with me, Gricko. Uh. Yeah, that, 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 that could solve the problem immediately, couldn't yeah. it? Wait, every time I've tried to get punched by Gideon, which is actually quite a lo- large number of times, now that I think about it, mm-hmm. all I had to do was just call you a bitch. You clown back up, you silly fuck. All right, we're getting right back in that arena, and I'm going to slap the paint off your face, damn No, it's just me. It's just me. It's Gricko. It's okay. I'll do that too! Uh, 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 stop him, Krimi! Stop him, Krimi! Ah! Hold on a minute, hold on a minute. This is a test, see? That's all it takes. You should know that by now. Oh, hey guys. Uh, Rimble slash Torbeck feels like it might be pertinent to say that Rimble slash Torbeck was the announcer and this. Maybe Ribble slash Torbeck's fault. Ribble slash Torbeck's willing to take this one. Oh, yeah, it was his fault. <laughs> I'm partly to blame. I, if I'd been there, I would have either reminded you or done the announcements myself, but I had other business. <laughs> it's just, you know, another What day. business did you have, Frosty? I thought, even though I was horribly possessed by a clown. Mm. I was horribly possessed by emotions. At the very least, aren't you the brains of the operation? What were you doing? I was, uh, binding Twig. Yeah, hi. I was able to retrieve her, and now she's here with us. Oh, yep. very important. I even found the key. Yes, we found a key. Oh, that's quite nice. It didn't work, though, because you guys didn't do what you were supposed to with the arena, but still found it. Well, let's hold on to it for when we do do it right. Yeah. We probably need I to have... I have both of them. He did also murder two gods in cold blood, but uh, and hit the body. Well, the the blood was fair, not cold. Wa- <laughs> <laughs> Guys, we have to have a serious conversation about how this witch light is getting into us, but maybe that's for another day. Uh. Well, I mean, I know for you, I mean, I'm not, you know, it, I mean, it's, it's like horribly pumped into your veins from strange magitech contractions. I mean, for the rest of us, we don't have an excuse. Yeah. You mean like why we're special compared to everybody else? Yes. 
I'm not sure that we are. Is it possible that that's what's happening in our minds and that uh, uh, others are feeling these same sways and shifts, but we're not perceiving them the same way they may not be perceiving us? It seems like sometimes we do radical things. No, those gods are dead. No, that's <laughs> just, they, there's no bringing them back. You know, it might be the work of Bofa. What's Bofa? Mm -hmm. Bofa these now. Damn it! Back in the arena, you <laughs> son of a bitch! <laughs> Well, we they're, 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 they're gone. <laughs> Perhaps someone should do the announcements before he kills Gricko and we don't get anything out of it. <laughs> no, fellas, come on, come on. Get back in here. Come on. Come back. <clears throat> Are we good? Are we good? Nah, we're fine, all right? Oh. Just don't say anything hilarious and provoking again, right? You're stepping in a little bit of frog blood, Gideon. <sighs> well, that's fine. I mean, I, you know, it's all over the place thanks to this guy. Uh, and what okay. the hell, guys? You were out there killing guards and where the heck were you? We left me and Greco to our own devices? No wonder everything got screwed up. Well, I finally talked to Morgo, and then I had to go find witnesses, and I guess I just, it slipped my mind that we should probably, no, it slipped Tolbeck's mind that we should probably mention the fact that we're trying to do it for the sake of Morgo's freedom. Yeah, <laughs> Mr. Crimey's right. <laughs> Can we please Tolbeck. keep it down about <laughs> killing the two guards in prison? Oh, I'm looking at Morgo. <laughs> Uh, no, in, in, in Minecraft. This is all in Minecraft. You know? <laughs> this is all theoretical. Um, you you look to her, and I won't make you roll a perception check to see that she is silently sobbing into her hands. Sure. Well, we're going to have to do something. Uh, um, uh, not to break the uncomfortable silence, <laughs> mm -hmm. but um, M M Morgo, uh, we're real sorry. <laughs> It's my own fault. I knew better than to trust that anyone would be able to break me out of this prison. <sighs> Surely this is what I deserve. Torbeck, Torbeck, man, sometimes they just do this. You just gotta ignore them until they're done, all right? Oh, surely there must be another way. I'm not sure. Un unless, unless the entirety of the soggy court could be swayed in my favor, I don't see a way. I mean, you could... I guess if we were going, I've already broken a few laws. If I want to be a knight on the run, you could try checking out the the thundercloud balloon that came in from Yon, <clears throat> one of Endelin's balloons. Mm. You could see if they have some tincture or something that could get me out of here. Though, in my heart of hearts, I really did want to be released. On my own accord. I mean, the king seems to like us, right, Mr. Crammy? Uh, that's yes, a good point. But, with the but king. the entirety yeah. of the soggy court, it's, it's just one wrong move on his part before he's... Yeah, and on the bridge. His hands, Mogo already said that his hands are tied on account of a culture that has been propped up through regular bloodshed. Mm. Uh, if if the, the more he acts against his culture, the higher risk of him being targeted and replaced by someone who's more bloodthirsty uh, it becomes. He does something crazy, they kill him. He, he, if he, he does anything they don't like, or <clears throat> really, it's if you're dissatisfied in any way and you want what you imagine to be a better life, you could stab the king in the back and become king of downfall. I don't know why you'd want to, as there'd be an immediate target on your back, but I'm not sure of a way to change it. Well, then what's stopping us? Why don't we convince the king? Well, I can do one of these. Just have him say it, let her out, and then he can stab him in the back tomorrow. I wouldn't want to see that. He's a good man. Uh, he I mean, is a good man. In his position, uh, you know, at so best he's, he's got two days he left. He didn't want it. It's not like he killed the previous king to become the king. It fell to him because of the unlucky circumstances of his brother. Has anyone ever just safely resigned? <laughs> <laughs> not to my knowledge. I don't know that he can. Oh. There would have to be... 
something extreme to convince the denizens of downfall that the king should be remain should remain. It would be crime to kill him. Because oh. as it stands right now, it's not even looked down upon. All right, Tormek slash Ribble will take one for the team. We'll become king, and then Torbeck slash Ribble <laughs> will embrace the sweet release of death. <laughs> No, I don't think that's a good plan at all. No, it's a terrible it's a plan, terrible plan like, I don't know. He's kind of like racking up, uh, you know, the crowns, if you know what I mean. He's killed every king we've come across, kind of. Yeah. If you count Agnan. Allegedly! <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, allegedly, of course. That's true. What's one more? Well, no. If you don't kill this one, it won't be everyone. It will be 50% of the kings we have met you have killed, Dorbeck. <laughs> <laughs> Silver line. Yeah, there we go. Chin up. Chin up. <laughs> Look, here's the thing. <clears throat> we'll put in a good word. We'll see what we can do. All right. Keep your hopes up. All right. Well, it's not as if my station has changed in the past twenty-four hours, so it's no point in being disheartened. Mm. She turns and she looks through some of the roots of the mango trees out to the full moon that's shining over the swamp. As long as somewhere out there, Wigglewog is going on grand adventures, then I will keep my spirits up. That one day we will meet again and he will continue to sing. Did I ever tell you that Wigglewog was quite the singer? What a beautiful voice. Oh. Wow. Always wanted to be a bard. It's oh. too shy and too scared. Wouldn't have guessed. Yeah, we. Based on what you told us about, of course. I mean, it's. it's <clears throat> oh, gosh, he really. I bet he's singing right now next to the Summer Queen in the Summer Court, perhaps. Singing for her, and she's like, Oh, with a walk, you will be my knight of summer. That's highly unlikely. Oh, because he's shy. <laughs> he would completely clam up if he were in audience with the Summer Queen. But regardless, I hope that wherever he's at, we're staring up at the same moon and both thinking about each other. Um, I mean, there's always a chance that after he went off, he had a great journey where he learned about his character flaws and the things that were bothering him. And he managed to meet like perhaps a wacky guide who helped him overcome his social anxiety. And then now he's singing for the Queen of the Fae. Yeah, and there's like a 50-50 chance he's staring up in the air, you know? Up in the beauty of Tartania. Yeah, it's all up and down. Smash cut to the bushes. (laughs) (laughs) Rick and Mortis is set in. He's like... (laughs) There's flies all over him. The one crawling on the eye. (laughs) Jesus! Poor guy. And then smash cut to heaven where you see the soul of him going, looking down, being, shut the fuck up! No! This is no! Stop lying! Tell her! Tell her! Tell her! Jesus. What a nightmare. This is we're not darker people. and darker. We're, we're not good people. <laughs> Look, we didn't kill the guy. That was out of character. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <Well. clears throat> All right, so we were going to swing by the shop anyway. Maybe false flag those fellas, and we'll keep an eye out for, you know, I don't know, magical items or magical crowbar or... Magical key? Yeah, or a tinker thing you were looking for. Mm. Sure. <clears throat> well, I wish you luck. If we have to break you out, and the soggy court believes you to be uh, uh, no longer noble, uh, without your chivalry, without your honor, that will be another step in your quest for honor. Yes. I will have to go on a night's journey to reclaim my honor. Mm-hmm. And hopefully one day meet up with Wigglewog. Yes. Even from a certain point of view. <laughs> Keep uh, your hopes up is all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> from a, a certain... uh, well, uh, in, in the 
great lord of the summer queen or something like that. <laughs> Why does it always get awkward when Morgo <laughs> brings him up? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. We wouldn't well, know. No. Torbeck, I think it's because Wickenwog and I had a very special relationship. But due to my knight's vow, we could never be more than friends. Uh, and sending him out on that journey without me, I was always his strength and <clears throat> his backbone. And sending him out without me, I I fear I may have sent him someday to his doom. But I hope that he's strong enough to face the journey of, ahead without me. And that when we do meet again, that we will both be better for our time apart. That's that is why it will back. Very romantic. Torbeck slash Ribble has a special lady back home, and due to certain complications, <laughs> we're a bit star-crossed, too. I hope that the stars will align for the both of you, and someday you can make it work, if that's what you both wish. Oh, Thank she's you. a real beaut. Clementines is her name. Hey. It's a lovely name. Um, <laughs> I'm, 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 she's, a, she's a little small for my taste. I actually don't know what she looks like. <laughs> Look at it this way. <laughs> if he does happen to <clears throat> meet his end on his grand adventure, just <clears throat> try not to take too much responsibility. Don't feel too bad about it. You know, don't be too hard on yourself. Just, you know, try at least like 80 or 90% responsibility. Definitely try to like lower it than 100%, but don't feel too bad. His fate is not my own. It is his. That's this right. is his path to walk. Yep, that's right. <clears throat> and I feel in my heart of hearts that I did all I could for him before he left. And I believe he is somewhere out there right now, growing and learning and being the best wiggle walk he can be. It's definitely growing. <laughs> oh, kind of like the gases from come back, death. Come back to vines. Come yeah. here. Oh. <laughs> Fungus. Yeah. Ah. Mushrooms coming. It's the Rot. circle of life, <laughs> and it moves us. Oh, sorry. When I get nervous, I break out into song <laughs> or stupid idioms. I break out into show tunes when I get nervous. Um, when I get so that's it. Maybe we should go now. Oh, yeah, yeah, there's nothing else at this place. Let's see if we can find something at this shop, uh, the Thundercloud. Um, uh, Ooh, and like conduct a heist. And we'll, uh, in, uh, not a heist, we'll see what they have on offer, and we never know what's going to fall out of the sky. We might be able to find something that uh, can help you get out of this prison cell. So. Yeah. Yeah, we can help her. Yeah. 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 Uh, are are we not in a rush to get back to the king and mm. our private pri- prior engagements? What time is it? I uh, Torbeck slash Rimmel doesn't have a watch. <laughs> What's a watch? Femi <laughs> has a watch. Use it all the time. Yeah. It doesn't really work. It just like the hands are spinning. <laughs> Your watch doesn't work, man. I could have fixed that like years ago. Well, I mean, it worked until we got in. Do you guys want to oh, talk about okay. this while we walk? Let's walk. Yeah. So, um, uh, very quickly, Morgo, do you have enough food? I don't know when the next um, <laughs> guards are going to be here to feed you. Oh, no, no it's, it's right only now. those two guards. They they had some strange anti-sleep uh, spell cast upon. They don't need to sleep, so they will go and fetch food when it's time. How do you get fed by the guards? <laughs> <laughs> also unrelated how's the longest you've ever gone without eating <laughs> well they feed me twi- three times a day mm-hmm. um, morning, noon and night mm-hmm. at least we have um, eaten wow. yes. wow, you're hungry um, <laughs> well they want to make sure that the they want to make sure that the fighters are uh, well nourished for the battlefield they, they don't want a weak battle they want to see a true um, battle to the death so uh, it's would make sense. Uh, that being said, um, they should be turning up in half an hour to an hour. Mm. Uh, they make their way in here, and they'll use one of the keys to drop the the barrier. And if you notice on on the door, there's a a small opening to slide a plate through. 
Torbeck slash Ribble read that uh, intermittent fasting and autophagy <laughs> is all the rage. So maybe Morgo should try that for the next um, 48 hours. <laughs> it's good for you. I'm not sure why they wouldn't bring food, but any off chance that they don't, I'm sure that I'm strong enough to withstand a day or so without food. Then it's settled. We'll move on. <laughs> yeah, she'll be fine. Yeah, well, we don't have to worry about this. Everything's gonna be okay. <laughs> and who knows, maybe the gods have unionized in the past day, and there will be another pair to arrive at the previously negotiated shift time. <laughs> Chin up. <laughs> oh, frogs don't have chins. Uh, oh, slimy amphibious lower head up. Uh, uh, I do. Uh, goodbye. Smash cut to the other guard where they're playing cards like, I can't believe they were willing to take 15 days in a row. <laughs> that overtime is insane. This is great. We follow Twig out of the prison and make our way. You see that Twig's already um, like jumping down the stairs out of the out of the prison. She's um, they are roots that kind of um, come up out of the muck and form these little steps down, and it leads on a pathway. And you can see off in the distance there is that big storm cloud balloon. And you see Twig as she like jumps on one, sings a little song, spins around, jumps on the next one. She's not really paying attention to you, but she's already on her way to the shop. She wants to I'm gonna go shopping. I'm gonna go shopping. What do they have for Twig today? And she's singing that as she makes her way <laughs> down the path. How much money do I have? Oh, nothing. They don't trade the barter and things. Yeah. Yeah. No, we have a whole Use bunch insurance. we have a whole bunch of stuff <laughs> that we pilfered from that guy what we don't like. Because I have a valuable piano key. Oh. That guy what is dead. <laughs> <laughs> the guy that Torbeck rightfully oh, usurped through uh, right of conquest. Uh, can we stop bringing that up? <laughs> it made Stormax slash Rebel uncomfortable. <laughs> there wasn't even a succession crisis. I mean, that's pretty good. <laughs> Stormax slash Rebel basically wasn't even there. <laughs> Uh, from a certain point of view, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> but hey, what's done is done. You may as well em em embrace it. Torbeck uh, slash Rebel's not sure. Perhaps it would make sense for us to buy a gift for Morgo, something to soften the blow when we finally tell her what's happened to Wigglewog. <sighs> Yeah, and if we actually do a business there, they won't see it coming when we false flag them and blow them out of the sky. Let's see what they have on offer first. <laughs> well, obviously. I mean, if they have cool stuff, you know, we'll get that first. And then we'll do the second the second thing. Okay. I'm up for anything at this point. <laughs> My hands are no longer clean. <laughs> Join the club. That's what I'm saying. I'll bomb them out of the sky. I've already killed two people. No one tell Hootsie. <laughs> We can't have her knowing that Frosty, you know, killing people with his mind, she's like used to that. That's an old hat. That's just Frosty. But with his mouth, that's very unlike Frosty. And you do have a horrible scar on your body where Frost drank from you. Oh, <laughs> is that our clown flesh? Oh. <laughs> no, just two puncture wounds. I'm sorry. He has more than that because he didn't have... Dracula fangs. It's just a full cat's mouth. Right? Just, just 14, 16 uh, puncture wounds. Oh, uh, it's like a. You know, when I saw the other beast masters at the carnivals and they suffered horrible tiger attacks, mm -hmm. kind of looked like this. Yeah, yeah. Oh, is that why my hand's not working? No, I seem to have severed many of your tendons <laughs> and ligaments. That's disgusting. Try and make a fist. Oh no! <laughs> Can you just like uh, jump yeah. some bananas in there? <laughs> oh, good idea, Frosty. Yeah, chew them up a little. Oh bit. no, I'm out of resources for the day. Finally, I'm not the only one. Tomorrow, I will have some bananas. Okay. Well, 
it's around this time buddy. that Twig runs up to you, Gideon. Gideon, can hey, I ask Twigsy. you a question? Yeah, come if on. If there's something super special there that I want, will you get it for me? If there's a super special what? If there's something super special at the shop, will you get it for me? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because I don't I mean, have any yeah. money. Well, they don't trade in currency. They trade in things. You have a lot of things. But I don't want to give them away. Well, that's fair. I want to keep them for sense. me. For Twig. Right. They're Twig's things. Things for Twig. Well, if you see something you like, you just let us know. We'll yeah, but I want can. you to get it for me, though. Because Crummy okay. will just lie about getting it for me, and then we'll go to get it on my bag. It won't be there. And then he'll try and tell me that I never even asked for it in the first place. Hey, Twigsy, why would you say something like that about Crummy? He wouldn't lie about getting it for you. He'd steal it from him. Yeah, but then he wouldn't give it to me until I made a deal with him and signed my blood oath into his book or something. Well, that's pretty fair. Okay, I see where you're coming from. But, you know, I mean, at the end, you'd have it. you just owe my blood oath. Okay. And don't you owe him kind of a blood oath? Did you ever see- know about that? Well, <laughs> I, don't, I, mean, I don't recall. I'm kind of his servant now, but then he also said I wasn't, and I, oh no, was I, I wasn't supposed to tell him that. Huh? Yeah, the cat's out of the bag now. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I hope didn't bear two dead bodies. Oh my god. Well, I guess actually, in retrospect, it's not surprising at all, considering what you've done. You committed severe war crimes. <laughs> Me? Uh-uh. Yeah. I'm sweet old twig. There was that. You didn't even bog her out yet. You were on the deck and you were just you were just firing from the hip. We thought yeah. you were dying. You killed like six people. To I didn't be, even land a punch. Anyways, you started blasting. To be fair, I was protecting my friends. I'd do anything to protect my friends. It's not a war crime. It's just cold-blooded murder. <laughs> I'm glad, I'm glad you killed those two dudes. They Their crotches were obliterated. I saw everything. <laughs> oh, man. Better Torbeck death. slash Ribble misses all the cool stuff. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, you were there. You were there. No, at that Whoa. time, he was Ribble slash Torbeck. <laughs> oh, is that who that was? I think so, yeah. Oh, but anyway, look, we're so close to the balloon. Let's go. Do you want to hold my hand and skip? Well, sure. I mean, you got the height discrepancy here is a little dramatic. Do you want to swing wanna... me by my arm, but not so hard that you pop my shoulder out of its socket yeah, and scream? Yeah, come on. I'll just hold your hands in front of me, and I'll swing you to <laughs> and fro if you were. Puppies! <laughs> Both and of her shoulders. Stop it, Derek! And then a round of mattress, and I swing her off the oh, air. Right. Yeah. Oh, here we go. <laughs> and you make your way forward. A big black balloon floats over the lake, tugging at its moorings. Beneath it hangs a basket made of black wicker and wood, which serves as a merchant's stall. A large pane of gray glass is drawn closed across an opening above the counter. A sign mounted above the window reads, Wondrous Wares and Fair Fares. The balloon is not made of fabric, but rather appears to be a roiling dark rain cloud that has been contained somehow with lines and netting. Standing within the basket and behind the glass pane, you see two what have been described to you as darklings. They look very similar, almost like they could be twins. And they look out at you in a way you wouldn't expect from merchants. They seem almost uninterested at your presence, as if your, your patronage is neither welcome, necessary, or wanted. One of them leans up against the glass and sighs and just looks between each of you as you make your way up. But neither one of them seems too happy to see you. Are we out of your shop? Yeah. All right, fellas, before we go in, mm-hmm. let's taste the joint. What do we think? Yeah, well, I mean, I think you can tell just from immediate see that uh, none of these two idiots are paying attention. <laughs> Pretty easy marks. That's what I mean. I'm thinking, like, maybe we just... I mean, the, the, the storm cloud doesn't seem too tightly tethered. We could probably do something with that. Uh, are we going to false flag them, or are we just going to, you know... Oh, it seems to be the only way. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I wasn't going to pop a seal on war crimes, <laughs> is all I'm going to say. But now, you know, once you pop, you just can't stop. I feel like, you know, we've already crossed that bridge. We, You know, we've committed atrocities. I mean, what's, uh, what's yeah. a little plant, you know? Mm. Uh, you know, we've, we've, already, we've already crossed the rub icon, as they say. 
No, if we're going to uh, <laughs> the rub icon, I know, I know what he's saying. It's a classic saying. I think he's talking about bully jugs again. Well, yeah, <laughs> so to speak. There's no going back yeah, from it's a like, point of view. <laughs> you think back to the the vision that you saw of bully jugs, and something catches your eye that on the cover it said the newest issue of Bully Jugs now with scratch and sniff. Mm. <laughs> No! <laughs> to make it awful. And you see, you see just the absolute like shredded, but like sections where it's clearly been dramatically scratched into, like dust litters the ground like around him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like a Every last tank. inch of yeah. oil. Yeah. 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 I'll, I'll take my off my eyes, stare off at a fucking <laughs> million yards stare. Do 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 do. do, do. Do, 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 do. It ain't me intensifies in the background. <laughs> well, he's gone. Uh, I can close my eyes, but not my nose. <laughs> Look, uh, <sighs> do you have a plan for how we're going to false flag these guys? Oh, did, but it seems to have <laughs> evaporated into the scratch and sniff bully jugs. What did you just say? Scratch and sniff bully jugs? Mm. No, I was just jesting. You know how I like to jape and joke, Gideon. <laughs> I broke. <laughs> your your gentle virgin ears so not <laughs> be soured and corrupted by what I have smelled and witnessed. Uh, you keep saying bolly jugs? <laughs> what are bolly jugs? By the way, Torbeck slash Ribble is a visual learner. <laughs> I'm sure in due time, Torbeck, you will understand, as I do. Okay. It was just you that saw that vision. Yeah. Uh Uh, When we saw those tucking bully junks under the sea. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, 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 crispy (laughs) crazy. Shavings litter the ground around. Hey, what's that? (laughs) We was going to plant the great big book of grudges on the the fellas would have the uh, Mm -hmm. balloon. Yeah, yeah. We're going to tuck it somewhere tight. Could it be as simple as trading it for one of the items that they have? Then they would have it. Well, they might recognize it. But then they'll have an, uh, uh, a Libby. Uh, yes, but it's, <laughs> it's their word against anyone else. <laughs> then a Libby. <laughs> <laughs> so dumb. Yeah. It's only a <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Damn it. Uh, it's only an OEB if, it's, uh, if they have multiple of them. Huh? You're thinking of an alibis. <laughs> oh. An uh, alibis. <clears throat> That's pretty good, actually. I just. I feel like we've got to be sneaky. You can't say, oh, yeah, we traded with a fair and square. We have the receipts. Here you go. I mean. Here's the one thing that we got to keep in mind, right? It's it's plausible deniability. If we just give it to them, then they can say, yeah, we got it from them. We need to plan it all. All sneaky-like. I see. That's what I was trying to say. Okay. Go in there, we just, you know, I can do one of my little... Just distract them? Yeah, distract them and I'll just drop it somewhere. Drop it, kick it under a table or something along those lines? That'll work. It's great minor diversion, you know, knock something over, say, ah, fuck, you gonna clean that up? And wait till they start cleaning it up, and then you just, you know, give them a little bit of that Agway uh, shuffle. It's it's in this moment that, Tremmy, you uh, notice that 
like Torbeck is missing, and he's like uncomfortably close to you over your shoulder, like looking down over you. <laughs> but who's stealthy enough to get in there and plant it? <laughs> oh my god! Oh, you're right, Torbeck. None of us are very good at that. Uh, I guess we should just go point. home. Mm, that's a good point. <sighs> we tried, Torbeck. Huh? What if you were to plant the book on? <laughs> Torbeck! Yes. Oh, Torbeck doesn't know. I think that if you were to find a location that looked like it was being intentionally hidden and we knew where that was, that would be a, a great value add, as they say. Torbeck uh, begins to pace back and forth thinking about this proposition, and as he passes through the shadows, he he disappears and reappears, and the light disappears, and the shadows reappear. Yeah. Like, oh, Torbeck just isn't sure that Torbeck can do it! I believe in you. Of all of the people here, I think that you might be the only one capable. Where does the book have to go? As I said, anywhere that looks like it was intentionally stuffed away or hidden by the two Darklings. That way it'll be even more legitimate when we tell them, tell people that they had taken it because they'd, they, they, they would have attempted to hide it themselves. Uh, Torbeck supposes if Mr. Crimey is creating some sort of diversion, then maybe Torbeck can do it. Mm. Torbeck trusts Mr. Crimey. <clears throat> well, before we do anything, let's take a look around and see what they got. All right? And... You know, if need be, we can barter, trade, maybe, you know, just sneak a little something. And uh, <clears throat> once we have everything we need, then we can do some kind of, you know, I'll just chat them up. If that doesn't work, we'll do sort of some sort of physical comedy, you know, and... Uh, the safety net of distraction would be to sever any of the lines connected to that thunderhead. That would cause danger to them. They don't want to lose that thing, and if it started to float away, as I imagine it might, if it were started to get separated from the cart, then we would have an easy distraction. Well, isn't the, the shop, like, isn't it... In the balloon. Yeah, it's... it's. Uh, I, they, was, they would yeah, I was, the the I was picturing it as hanging the down from yeah. the bottom of the... <laughs> no, Frost has become yeah. a fucking nightmare, man. <laughs> I just think we'd play fight a little bit, draw yeah. away. He wants to just crash the whole thing into the damn ground. Got Mate. a taste for blood and Gricko, and just now a, he's unstoppable. Just a little chaos. Uh. <laughs> and maybe if Gideon, if you could find if out if they're carrying any CDs, we might be able to... <laughs> Frost can have little a chaos as a tree. Yeah. <laughs> we might be able to, to have that be the first place we start. The CDs? The CDs nuts. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Mikey, I would like you to roll a d20 for me. That one was actually very natural. That was incredible. Good, that was good. I got a good. That was a good one. That was a good one. I was a second away from saying it before you. Oh man, CDs. What the I'm, hell I'm was that? Good. That was Goodbye. well played. That one was good. good. Yeah, that was good. Uh, oh god. Uh, but well you need done. to roll a d20. <laughs> Ten. I so badly wanted you to have any pun or acronym that was like mildly fantastical and instead you just threw a pie in my face. It's wonderful. Uh, I tackle Grico when we roll into the shop. <laughs> Tumbling we about. literally turned into like a Looney Tunes cloud. <laughs> yeah. like a foot in the roll, in, roll a d4 for me. I'm gonna, oh. That will make my decision. And then there's also the, three. the moment where the cloud continues and the limbs are still flying out but Grico just walks you out You become an automaladrin. <laughs> what? You become an automaladrin. Uh, she beats no, it's more. Oh my god. Ooh. Oh, I know a true member of the Fae from the Court of Spirit Halloween when I see one. Me? Oh yes, woo! What are you talking about? Count Sorf, brilliant! <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 yeah. That's that's me, Count, Count Sorf. Uh, truly, <laughs> the genius of an dream. How did you? How did you know all of that? I don't. It is the powers. Yeah. 
of the Spirit Halloween. <laughs> I remember doing that, oh. feeling cool. I miss that, I miss that so much. <laughs> we enter the. Uh, As an Adam Elijah, and I'll uh, while uh, I'll, I'll go over and I'll say they will not be expecting my cobweb gun. <laughs> Where did you get that? <laughs> <laughs> From the spirit of Halloween, uh, man. He's I pull it out it. of my ladrin flesh every time I change. <laughs> From there, I shall not tell. No one should know. All right, get in the fucking store. Hey, hold on. Give the book to Torbeck. Uh, Who has the book? Uh, <laughs> probably Count. I, rem- no, I, I remember, I remember Gricko having it, but oh. I'm not sure. Oh, one moment. I have some books here. Oh, let me see. oh sorry. That was the Necronomicon. <laughs> well, now we're scratching. Yeah. I'll pull one out. Ah, ah, oh, no. Sorry. Sorry. Oh, here we go. How big is this book? It's a large tome. Okay. For you, it, it's like a large reading book, but for Gricko, it was monstrous. All right. Well, wrap it in cloth said. or something, man. Wrap it up so they don't just, like, see it sitting around. Oh, Torbeck slash Ribble has his egg and bloody scarf. <sighs> You've got to have some kind of filthy cloth in that filthy sack. Just the filthy sack. Here, here. On. You should never travel without a towel. Oh, thank you, Frost. Do what? No, you need a towel. I no, wrap it up nicely. No, I, I, well, I, I, I just lent my towel to the doorbag. He's going to put it in a filthy cubby hole. It's already, it's already covered in like muck and grime and stench. Oh yeah, I mean. In, in the reality of this universe, all of the times that I went in with my backpack, everything should be soaked and covered and destroyed. But it's a fantasy game, so it's all fine. <clears throat> Are we ready? <clears throat> I think so. As ready as Torment can be. <clears throat> to the Thunderclap. I'll walk up to the sword. You walk up the path and you you find yourself standing in front of this pane of glass and you see the two darklings there. One of them is sitting towards the back of the basket and just eyeing you suspiciously. The other one is leaning up against the pane of glass. Uh, she's looking out at you through uh, half moon spectacles. Um, she is drumming her long um, pointed nails on the uh, on the wicker part of the basket as she looks at you, one hand under her chin, and she doesn't say anything, but as you approach, she points down at a sign that's hanging at the very front oh. uh, of, the, of the basket, and it says, available for a limited time only. Very good thimble. Fingertip, not included. <laughs> Mug of bumble beer. Has a nice sting to it. Hey. Dusk mallow pie with decorative bite marks. Mm. Bundle of dry wood. Great for starting fires. Ink portraits. If we have to look at you, so should you. Moonlight monocle. No more fumbling in the dark. <clears throat> hmm. Oh. Was your intention to tell me that this is a list of your wares? Oh, yes. You should know what we have. No. Oh, and um, welcome to Bobble and Charms. Hello. What to do? My name's Trinket. This is Bobble. Oh, wow. It's nice to meet you, Trinket. Why don't you name the place Bobble and Trinket? Said Bobble and Charms, and like after your names. <laughs> <laughs> right. well, I don't I mean, know. I mean, I'm <laughs> Trinket's kind I'm of out, like a out. charm. I mean, I think it flows a little better. Charm is currently having an audience with Pavlona. Oh. But you can ask her when she gets back if you're so curious. Oh, so drink it is not one of the co owners. Oh. You travel with an autumn ladder. Yes, what of it? <laughs> is that Nothing. a problem? We yeah, like I can take very, care of it if it's a problem. He's very festive. I am from the court of autumn. <laughs> My blood is loved by basic girls wearing hugs and yoga pants around the world. <laughs> What are you talking about? Oh, that's a good <laughs> <laughs> My only fans is pumpkin spice. 
I'm sorry. Did you say only fangs? Only fangs, yes. That is very good, dungeon mistress. It is now ca- that's canon now. That's canon now. <laughs> My, do you not do you not have only fangs here in Prismir? No. Oh well. <laughs> oh, when Mikey is censoring himself, you know he should stop this line of thinking. <laughs> Let us move on. I'm gonna browse if you don't mind. And I look around to see if there's anything that's not on that side. Roll a perception check. Have you already introduced yourself as Kremmy? No. Okay. Oh, that's pretty good. Oh, we are we playing D&D? <laughs> that's, uh... That's pretty good. That's pretty good. 21. Ooh, that is pretty good. 21? 21. Uh, you look around and you do see that set up um, <coughs> behind the glass that there are um, there are shelves and there are um, little places <coughs> where knickknacks are hidden here and there. And there are a few things. There are um, some potions of healing. Um, you do see some other potions in varying colors um, and in different types of vials and jars. Um, you see some gems, uh, a handful of magical items, but one thing catches your eye. Towards the very back, almost completely hidden by an empty leather tome that appears to be like a, a, a wizard's spellbook, an unused wizard's spellbook, you see a <clears throat> you see a long glass container with a, a with a wooden base. And inside of it, shining in beautiful um, opalescent colors, is a pure unicorn's horn. That's pure. <clears throat> it's for sale. It's what for sale? This uh, I don't know, pink thing. It was like gl- gl- glittery, glowing, magical thing. You mean? the white opalescent unicorn horn that shines with the radiance of a thousand rainbows. Oh, is that what that is? Yes. Oh. I see. <laughs> <laughs> I start to sweat. <laughs> but I'm trying to like, oh. Yes, it's for sale. Oh, uh, how much? The color of your eyes. Oh, wow. That's quite oh, bright. <laughs> Uh, you mean like what part of my eyes? The color from your eyes. Remy, Remy, don't, don't, don't do this. This is madness. First of all, I will tell you that this is an authentic unicorn's horn. It was taken magic, from huh? a unicorn in prison. Like a live, like a real live unicorn, right? Yes. You're not fucking with me? It's incredibly rare. It's very its, hard to find. Its, One of a kind, really. Certificate of authenticity or anything like that? Oh, you can look at it and tell, but if you don't believe me, holding it would be more than enough for you to be able to determine its magical abilities. Can I hold it? <laughs> no. <laughs> Kremmy, listen to me. You don't need that unicorn horn. We can work out whatever erectile dysfunction problems you may be having. <laughs> but more importantly, like more importantly, oh. these, uh, how did they acquire the she unicorn horn? She moves over almost as if she's moving through shadows. She's very lithe and very quick. And as she picks up the container, she slides the glass off soundlessly and immediately prisms of rainbow shoot out from this thing and you're almost blinded and hypnotized by the beauty of this horn as you are looking at it there is barely any light this is this is well into the evening Uh, the sun has fully gone down over the horizon and you are just surrounded by glorious glowing white and rainbow light is if you were standing inside of an opal itself. Uh, disgusting! 
Birmingham and Sirius. <coughs> Don't look at it. If you buy it, then they'll try to be your... You're, you're, you're endangering unicorns by buying it. You see? How does that make any fucking sense? You buy, you're incentivizing them to, by making it more valuable, by letting them sell it. They'll want to go find more. How did they acquire it? So if you're saying... Wait, can I respond via my Yeah, head? yeah, yeah. Oh, we're, okay. just, we're just, uh, we're on, uh, 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 connector channel now. I'm just like, <laughs> in reality, like, staring at each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I'm, I'm, my hands are inside my room, and I'm just looking down, but I'm, in my mind, we're having a telephone chat. I mean, but it's just, it looks cool. I mean, what's your point? You, you, your eye color is your own, but I'm warning you, if you do this, you are hurting unicorns, not helping. Oh, so you think that, I mean, A, I guess giving them eye color sounds like some sort of weird fey bargain, right? And maybe, they mean like the blood in my eyes and I'm like, oh, they're going to take the red and then my eyes explode or shrivel up and die, like that sort of thing? No, I think that they'll just make the pupils, the irises, black and white. No more pigment. Oh, it's like they won't be like yellow. Right. My eyes really need to be yellow, you know what I mean? That's pretty cool. What are you going to do it. with the horn? I, uh, Think of the other unicorns. I just want it, Frost, okay? I, I, I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I'll put it on a shelf, it'll look nice. It'll be a display piece. <clears throat> I'm not going to stop you, but I just wanted you to hear my words of warning. Hold on, hold on. Walk me through this. Mm -hmm. If buying it would endanger unicorns, yes. would stealing it save the unicorns? Stealing it would not hurt the unicorns. <laughs> you see Twig as she's climbing oh up, hang, trying to look over the counter. Um, she seems transfixed on this unicorn horn, and she looks towards um, she looks towards Trinket, and she says, "What? That unicorn you took that from must be in so much pain right now." What is it doing without its horn? Well, what it's doing now is none of our problem, little one. A unicorn horn is worth a lot. It has intense magic. Oh. It's up to the buyer what they choose to do with it. And how we came by it, well, it, we happened upon it. Twigs, it'd be cool, all right? It doesn't even but look no, that real. It does definitely a real unicorn horn. Look at it. It sparkles with maybe the light of like 500 rainbows. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Come on, come on, man. Come on. Try well, I've think? never even seen a unicorn in my whole life. I've always wanted to. So, Gid, are you saying that maybe based on the price, you think it should sparkle with more like 700 yeah, rainbows? Yeah, I'm thinking or like, you know, maybe, maybe the color out of one of your eyes. You know what I mean? Like, it's like half value. At oh, best. Like I mean, it's not right. like I've, I've seen at least a hundred unicorns in my day, and every single horn I've seen is better than this. Uh, what could Mr. Grammy possibly have used for your eye color? I'm worried it's going to be some sort of trick, you understand? Or even if it isn't, like, who knows what the impact's going to be on my vision? Maybe, you know, mm. Mm, I'll see in black and white or something. I don't oh, know. no, that's horrible. <laughs> you can always come to the kingdom of Spirit Halloween and get the cheap discount colored contacts. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> well, that actually seems like a very reasonable solution. We promise they don't have flesh-eating bacteria in them. <laughs> Torbeck. <clears throat> Torbeck. Uh, as this conversation... As soon happening. as you do that... <laughs> it, 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 I'm in your mind. Don't look around. Just play cool. Play you cool. may wonder. Just stay cool. <laughs> Torbeck just like looks up into the corner. No, no, no. Look, look, look forward. Look, look normal. Act, act casual. All right. I need to practice this with you. I'm sorry. I sprung this on you out of nowhere. Uh, hear me. This is Frost. Do you see next to the unicorn horn that book? It's approximately the size. Without of the book. moving, he like, I just, like eyes just go to where he thinks you're talking about. Uh, you did describe that there was uh, something like a wizard's book, a tome. And I, uh, do you see it? You can, you can, you, can, you don't have to grunt out loud. Just <laughs> respond in your mind <laughs> the way Tor I'm speaking to you now. You see Torbeck's face, like, like kind of like screw up, and you hear in your mind. 
<laughs> How can I smell that? <laughs> that is remarkable. No, no, no. You just like you're thinking. Like you're thinking uh, a thought. Think a thought to me. Tormek uh, is trying. <laughs> it's not bad. <laughs> Okay, I, I'm not going to do this again until we have a chance to practice in private. Uh, <laughs> ask for the book if you think you can exchange the book with the uh, book of grudges and then return the book of grudges to them. Hand it off. Pass it off to them. If you feel you can make an exchange, great. If you feel you can steal your way behind this situation and, and get it in there, do that. But I'm offering you another option, that's all. All right, Torbeck hears this and is, you can see he's like starting to sweat. Like, through, like his fur is getting damp. Like I mean, you can see that he's starting to sweat. Uh, my question, Torbeck's question uh, to the DM would be, um, what's the how how well lit is this room, and what so are the light sources? You are not from? in a room. We're not in. So a room. you are, oh. you are. There is like a dock that goes out towards the swamp, okay. and anchored at the edge of the dock is this balloon. Their shop is in the basket of the balloon. It's like a shush so you're standing the outside in okay. the middle. The basket is just over the water. Okay. Well, how well lit is it outside? I mean, what time of day it's is it? It's dark. It's nighttime. It's nighttime. Are there any uh, right now? Light there sources? are there are tons of light because the unicorn horn has been oh, opened, shit. and there's this beautiful, brilliant prismatic light that's just shooting everywhere. Um, are there like if the if the the horn wasn't radiating light? It would be light. very dark. They so, have they have a torches? few melting candles yeah, around candles. the rim Perfect. of the wicker okay. basket. Um, but they seem to see very well in the dark. Is the storm cloud um, doing any? Like, are, we're pretty close it to it, is, right? It is rumbling. Um, so far, you've not seen any bits of lightning, though there have been, um, you have heard some thunder. So and like it, is, it is very gently drizzling on you, but it oh. seems to keep the complete inside of the basket dry. But around it, you feel a soft rain. Torbeck would take... Uh, a step or two back away from this horn, just trying to get away from the light and waiting to see what happens and is kind of surveying the area. Uh, Torbeck made note of how lively Trinket moved mm -hmm. and it makes him nervous. Uh, but he's going to wait for his moment and try to wait to see what happens when this unicorn light dies down. Okay. <clears throat> Gideon? Yeah? I want that unicorn horn. I had, you know, I had my eye on something in here for you. I bet you'll never guess in a million years what it is. The unicorn horn? No, nah, it wasn't that. That's for Kremmy. <laughs> what do you mean that's for Kremmy? No, it's for Kremmy. There's something in here that's obviously you. Is it just it gonna, shouts your name. Is he going to get it? What? The unicorn horn. Well, probably. That's a very crummy thing to do. You know, get what he wants. Is he going to take you back to the unicorn and make sure that they're whole? Yeah. Okay. Then I can support that. The unicorn must be in a whole lot of pain having its horn taken away. Well, I think that he would think, you know, I don't want to speak for him, but if he returns this horn, he makes a lifelong friend with a unicorn, and that's pretty bad ass. For sure. I bet that unicorn will feel indebted to Krim forever. Am I? Do I hear this conversation? Yeah. Uh, no, I rest well, tiny twig, twig field. Nice stop. Can I do it again? The unicorn is certainly not in pain. It is dead, most certainly. <laughs> no, removing a unicorn's horn doesn't kill it. Well, it would have been easier to kill it first and then remove it. Yes. So logically, it is very likely dead. The thing that no. removes all pain. That doesn't make sense, though, because... If you remove a unicorn sworn, it loses so many of its powers and so it can't get away anymore, so it's easily trapped. And then you can do things like shaving off bits of its hooves to use magical potions. You can steal mm. bits of its tail mm. and hair and mane, which have magical properties. Unicorn blood is also very valuable. It'd be stupid to kill a unicorn. Twigs, I'm a little worried about how much you know about poaching unicorns. No, it's not just unicorns. I know about poaching lots of things. I know about lots of stuff just in general because I've run the inn for countless years and I've met lots and lots of travelers who knew all kinds of stuff good in. You wouldn't know the horrors I've seen. How many of your patrons have been poachers? A few. Mm. They're Molly's favorite ones and most of the time I didn't let them stay. Who knew the poaching industry and 
Hither was so booming. No, it's not hither, though. There's not much here. It's thither where all the stuff is. Because here it's so swampy and gross, like all the pretty things don't stay here. They leave. So they get it all in thither and then bring it here to trade for well, like what? I mean, what do these guys have? The Darkling said they're from Yawn. That's Endolin's place. And I guess it makes sense because of all the storm clouds and Endolin's all stormy and stuff. Seems that there. makes me wonder, were they telling the truth about the unicorn horn and it just happened upon them? Or is the unicorn in yawn? Well, I mean, if there's a unicorn out there that's still alive that's missing its horn and Krammy can possibly reunite said coupling and then gain a unicorn companion forever that'll rush to his I mean, aid in combat. I mean, that's pretty incredible. It's possible the unicorn's dead. I just can't imagine someone harvesting a unicorn horn and then wasting the rest of the unicorn. Well, I don't know a lot about unicorn poaching, but that tracks. Twig actually has me convinced. I think you should buy the horn. So while, while this is all happening... Well, what are you going to get me? Oh, here we go. I, I would have been trying to ask as many questions as I can to uh, Trinket or Bobble or whoever I'm, I'm speaking to. Um, and I guess Torbeck will be there too. And while I'm talking, and once I get a sense that like the chatter has uh, has stopped, I'll say, Bananya! <coughs> Bananya! <coughs> Sorry about that. Blah, Bananya! <coughs> Uh, Boo. So anyway, uh, what do you know what year? I'm allergic to those. <laughs> no, I don't. We just happened upon it. We confirmed its authenticity, <clears throat> and it is available for sale. If you are not interested in its purchase, and she closes the lid over it, and the prismatic light, almost in like um, a quick. I can't, I can't make the Derek noises, but like, uh, like, <laughs> like, 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 kind of like that. But you know how like light gets super bright, and all of a sudden, like in an instant, it it disperses, yeah. and it is it is almost shocking the way that it rocks you when you are thrown into darkness. Your eyes have all of the spots as your as they begin to try and adjust to the darkness that surrounds you, and you watch as she takes it and she places it into a chest closes it, and locks it. <clears throat> I look to see if Gideon and the vampire have started, like, tussling or doing physical... Uh, I, I'd, uh, <laughs> I'd like to, uh... Wh who are you talking to? Trinket? Uh, the only one that's talking to you is Trinket. I'm talking um, Trinket. <clears throat> hey, Bobble, Bobble, Bobble get, hey, come over here. I want to get this uh, bundle of sticks. She looks at you. Ugh. <sighs> Okay. You want a bubble a bundle of sticks. Yep, yep, perfect for my friend. Just shouts her name. Alright, that will be the rhythm in your stick. No, no, how about a, how about a toy of spider climb? No, that will be that will be the jig in your walk. Well shit. Uh well you take any other kind of currency? No. You only not, take like not for this bundle of sticks. <sighs> it's a very rare bundle of sticks. Well, what, how is that the case? What does it do? How is it so rare? You want it? <clears throat> well, yeah, but I mean, I could go outside and get a whole bunch of bundles of sticks. Then do that. Well, I don't want to do that. I'm here with you. You have wares. I have a pseudo currency, and I'd like to spend it here if you would accept it, like a proprietor of a shop. Probably. And as a customer, I expect you to pay the price of the rhythm in your walk. Well, damn. Well, to be fair, there's less of a jig in your walk and more of a hold down. <laughs> Perhaps it will not be such a loss. Oh, uh, well, I was gonna. Uh, <coughs> Mm -hmm. I was gonna, you know, the classic, uh, like, you know, chain shifting. I was gonna try and be like, hey, you know, can you break a, can you break a toy of spider climb? And then like, ah, oh, man, well, here you go. And I'm like, ah, oh, no, I think you gave me the wrong one. No, you need this. 
and just, you know, like scramble them with a bunch I of chains on. No, no, no. I mean, you know, well, they don't accept that anyway, so, you know. Oh, damn. Would you like to make the purchase or not? Oh. I don't know. This place is always sucking stuff out of us, you know, like memories. <laughs> Yeah. Not in the fun way. <laughs> While this is happening, I'm gonna just slowly try to like lean up to Dracula's cousin. What's your name? Whoa! My name is Grigo Grim Grim. <laughs> <laughs> I'll lean up to Grigo Grim Grim. And oh, say, don't you recognize me, Kremi? Whoa! Go get in a bitch. He's gonna say the same thing. <clears throat> <clears throat> Whoa. Gideon, huh? how do you feel about the great seasonal beverage blah blast? Well, I don't know. I can't say that I've ever had it, but I mean, it sounds pretty good. You know, it doesn't surprise me that you haven't had it. Do you know why? No, I mean, well, I don't know. Is it commonplace? Why would it? I mean, no, I don't know why. They don't serve it to bitches. <laughs> oh, fuck! I got a motherfucking count. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm so sick My of you. Cow. Oh, I just, I just, his cow. And I just shoved him into a wall. Damn it, Count Grim Grim. I hate you so damn much. The moment this happens, the moment this happens, and Torbeck realizes that he has a chance. Uh, he's done this before. He, this is not his first time seeing Slinking in the shadows for God knows what reasons. Mm. He takes a few steps back and begins to silently try to blend with the shadows. Only this time, uh, something different happens. Something that he doesn't really realize that he uh, has no control over. Uh, the you feel the, the witch light begin to like course through his veins as a mutagen is used to increase my Ooh. dexterity to twenty three. Mm -hmm. uh, Torbeck will get longer and thinner and longer and thinner and longer and thinner until he's almost just a crack in the door and then gone. And I would like to attempt to go completely stealthy as possible in the shadows of this basket shop. You get the sound of a plunger dropping. Ew. Dropping or landing? I don't know what a drop. Uh... Like it needs to like. It's like putting witch light in his bits, right? Oh, the, that yeah. kind of plunger. Yeah. Like that kind of a drop? Yeah. Uh, or you. Because when I think of like a plunger a dropping, I can think a of syringe. a plunger like. That's so what, I would that's say, I, I would say in this instance, it's it's less like like gearing up like yeah, yeah. last time. It's mm -hmm. it's more it's more because it's like it's a slow a, drip. Oh, a yeah. drip. Because it's almost like he doesn't realize that his flesh is undulating. He's, he doesn't know that it's happening. Yeah, 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 yeah. has been released. I'm just going to roll for stealth. Ooh, is like that, that right? I like that. I like that. I like that. And because of how this is working, I had them roll at disadvantage. Uh, I rolled a natural 20 for a 28. Oh! Yeah, you are easily able to make your way into the um, into the uh, the basket and make the swap if you so choose. Yeah, as soon as uh, Torbeck thinks that he's done what he needs to do, he would very you know <clears throat> like wisp through the shadows, uh, attempt to swap the books. And I will say you're easily able to do that with that stealth. I would have you do a sleight of hand, sure. but I'll have you do it at advantage, given the fact that they are easy, they're very clearly distracted and your <clears throat> stealth is so high. Um, but in this moment, while all of this is happening, I need you to make a wisdom saving throw. <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Yeah. You look like you'd come to the kingdom of spirit Halloween and pick out the big daisy dudes. <laughs> I'm so sick of you, man. But there is budget stretchy pants with the terrible denim paint. <laughs> that will very flake effort for one night. <laughs> I take solace in the fact you got no resources left. So I'm going to punch oh, you right fuck. in the damn arm and your whole thing's going to fall off. Stupid tendons. Uh, what is it? Kind of save? Wisdom. Uh, rolled an 11. So 13. Nice. Um, you hear the loud crack of thunder as lightning shoots out of the rain cloud. <sighs> and you watch as Trinket raises her hand. You will be silent. And you immediately feel your body lock up as you are paralyzed as she casts Hold Person on I you. I was oh, choking uh, Count Grim Grim. I was doing this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Do not. <laughs> Make us use more that we have at our disposal to deal with unruly customers. Don't have a cow, man! 
I will give you one more chance to make your purchase quietly or leave. Mm. Uh, she you snaps her fingers and drops the whole person. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's a very welcome establishment. Jeez, you know, a couple of guys can't even scuffle around and break a whole bunch of stuff. We have some very important objects here with high price tags. Oh, so we can't have them broken when two imbeciles can't control themselves <clears throat> and their animalistic urges. So you're saying that the business is good? Whatever is happening here, <laughs> I don't like it. Ugh, this, you should come to the autumn court. She reaches into her pocket and she pulls out this black powder that glitters in the moonlight. And she looks towards you and she blows it into your face. And you immediately feel the witch light fading from you as Gricko begins to return. Um, she takes uh, she takes a red um, not, good enough. not even a red a dark purple, purple velvet bag with uh, an embroidered crescent moon on the front and sets it down on the counter should you choose to purchase anything today I think you will need this so we'll offer this for free dispelling dust Mm. To forgo whatever that was in the future. First one is free, I guess. Only three charges, though, so use it wisely. Oh, thank you. No, um, if you choose to make a purchase today. Oh, oh my apologies. Uh, I would be interested in perhaps your most powerful items uh, and what they would be. You'd be willing to trade for. Uh, I understand, uh, based on the suggested trades that you've given uh, uh, my companions. Um, that it's not going to be something physical. I have uh, uh, trinkets that I've found across the <sighs> land, but that you're interested in something more. So, please, I'd be curious. What uh, do you have to offer? Uh, I am I am Count Grumple, and I. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? I'm Count Grumple. It's a pleasure to meet you. Oh. Yes. <laughs> and I seek only the most powerful artifacts. I'd be curious to know what I'd be trading for before uh, putting anything on the table. Well, let us see what we have. Roll a d10 for me, please. Give me... Oh, that's weird. Huh. Is the unicorn horn box opaque? Mm-hmm. Like, you can't see the horn through the box. It's entirely so closed. So, it... It has a box of its own, which has a wooden um, base and then a glass casing that goes over it. She took that and put it into a chest and locked it. How much do you think the chest weighs, roughly? More than your mage hand can carry. I don't have mage hand. Uh, Probably around 250 pounds. (laughs) Jesus. We only need 25 mage hands. <laughs> it's a big fucking chest. Yeah. Oh, God, it's like a safe. Um, a knife. You imagine that there's more in it than just the unicorn horn. This is like their treasure vault. <clears throat> you got a nine? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Hold on. This is the hand of Vecna. <laughs> uh, I'll take it. Uh, yeah, 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 I'll That's train, the one. I'll trade my penis for it. Yeah. My left testicle. Uh, sure. I wasn't using it anyway. Uh, roll a D100 for me, please. A D100? Mm-hmm. Uh, I've only I had my oh, D100 McShino. Oh, That's fucking good. Um, where's that? Here and this. Give me that. 14 action. 14 on D100. Okay. My left testicle suddenly disappears. <laughs> well, we did acquire this recently. Mm. And she goes over to that same chest and she pulls the key from around her neck, unlocks it, and she pulls out a beautiful blade that glows with a dark purple light. This is a luck blade. Oh, wow. Uh, it, well, it, does it cut 
in the, does it kill luck, or does it? Uh, do you stab into? It I'm not in? quite sure. Hmm. I just know that it's priced very highly. Well, I appreciate the physical, certainly. Uh, I'm looking for something more to benefit my mind to expand. Oh, right, and she puts it back in. Roll another D, uh, D10. A D10? Uh, I, I'm just hoping that no one has noticed that fucking Torbex is, is missing. Oh, I think this will probably be the, do the trick. Uh, a three. Now, D100 for me, please. <clears throat> I'm feeling very jiggly. 43! Okay, okay. Well, oh, I don't think this will help you. It's a potion of frost giant strength. We'll just toss that back in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> uh, roll another, roll another D, oh, no. D10. <laughs> yeah, okay. And then a D100. Uh, this time five. This time, uh, 15. So, uh, luck blade plus one. Well, a learned man. Mm. I have a spell scroll here. Etched with the letter, or with the number eight. You're drawn to threes and eights, aren't you? How do you know this about Count Grumble? (laughs) I can see it in your eyes. This would not have come to me in such a random way Hmm. if it weren't drawn to you. Well, uh, what are its contents? Perhaps I am interested in a trade and uh, you're dispelling dust as a added benefit. Well, you can find out when you unroll the scroll. It came to you by chance. I believe you should take a chance on it. And in exchange, I want an ounce of your fear. Just one ounce. Yes. And she pulls from her robe a tiny vial. Just enough to fill this vial. What say you, Count Crumple? I don't see why there would be any harm in having less fear on me. I'm on the chest. I'm eyeballing it, see how big it is. Grego? Yeah, oh, what are your thoughts? I mean, that be, sounds pretty good. You know, some fear doesn't sound too bad. Could be that you're, lo- you're losing some of the fear you got. Could be that they can use it against you. I mean, imagine a better weapon. Your own fears, bottled up, thrown back at you, whenever they please. If that's their game, we could sell the bottle. They could do whatever they want with it. It's a risk. But I also must find out what's in that scroll. If it's threes and eights, it could be everything that we need it to be here to solve these problems, to help us work our way through this adventure and, and, and find ourselves whole on the other side. I'm no math magician. But I feel like there ain't no way numbers is going to help us in this situation, Frosty. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> oh, that was it. No. Oh. That was it. Awesome. So, I mean, is it worth the price? But the price don't sound too bad. Seems like a weird price to spend for an uh, item sight unseen. Would you like me to pay? Can we? Can I pay the price, too? If, like, you know, we're all, we're all a unit. Oh, take. We're all some fellows. No. Oh. Hmm. If you want this scroll, mm. scroll of eight that came to you, you will pay the price for it. I do believe we have a deal. Lovely. 
and she takes the she takes the vial and she leans towards you and she takes her her fingers are very long and her nails are um long and pointed and she slowly runs her fingernail up under your chin and as she gets to the tip of her chin your mouth un- um, voluntarily opens and you all notice a small wisp pulled out of him and as she swirls it around and places it on the rim of the glass you watch as it fills the glass with a strange greenish uh, luminance she corks it and places it into her pouch she reaches forward she grabs the the velvet the purple velvet sack of the of the dispelling dust and the scroll and she places them in your hands it was a pleasure doing business with you Thank you. Um, yes. Do I feel any different? You feel a tiny bit lighter, but you're not quite sure why. Hmm. I, a fair trade. Thank you. And did you want the sticks? Thank hmm. man. You seem like weird trades. And you, the unicorn horn. I will offer a final time. It's almost the hour of closing, so we're about to, sh- to set up shop. Nice, uh, Close up shop. Nice chest, this. <clears throat> yes. Who, who made it? Unsure. It's mighty sturdy. You it's got a good true. lock on there? Very much so. Is it like a magical lock? I can kind of imagine it's magical lock. Yes. What kind of magical lock you The kind you're not going to be able to break into. No, I wouldn't. What do you take me for? You think I'm going to break into your chest? No, I'm not that kind of person. Roll a wisdom saving throw. <laughs> oh, oh. She can't turn inside out. That's Ooh. probably pretty good. Are both of my characters proficient? In wisdom? Mm-hmm. Oh, they are. Uh, 17. Wow. Um, uh, Twister Dread. Ooh. Thank you, Chad, for that. Thank you, Chad. You got him. I'm gonna use the big fucker for this. I one. love that. Cool. 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 Feel the play. Ooh, yeah, that was that good. was so good. It bounced off of the 18 yeah. like so yeah, hard. Fate. Those, those monster dice, they do not. They're, uh, they're, they're harsh mistresses. Oh, man, I fail almost certainly nine. <laughs> You just made it. <laughs> <laughs> the DC was eight. Hmm, hold on, I have to. Yeah. You will not break into it. You cannot steal the unicorn horn within. If you want it, you will have to pay the price. Just like all the rest before you. And don't try to weasel your way out of it. I know what's on the surface of your mind. Do I have a sense of what was cast on me? That's what I was looking. You technically don't know. I don't think she's hiding it, though. I think it's very clear if she's cast Detect Thoughts on you. Okay. Woo-wee. Not suggestion. You, that was worded in a specific way. But. Nope. Yeah. You'd probably f- have a recognizing feeling from yeah. when I get, I get yeah. flippy. It's a nice horn, all right? I mean, it's, it's beautiful and cute. Look at it. I do want it. it I, 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 are you willing to meet me halfway with anything? Like maybe no. the color of my left toe. No. <laughs> big, big toe, left big toe. The color of your eyes, and not a pigment less. What color are Kirby's eyes? Yellow. They're yellow. Okay. And I promise you, this will be the only unicorn horn you ever come across. So this is a a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for something so useless as a color. I think this is some kind of trick. I think you're saying color, it's super vague and mysterious and all fey wild like and then uh, you, I'm going to agree to it. And then all of a sudden my eyeballs are going to melt out of my fucking skull. I've seen it happen. Not with fey magic, but with shadow magic. I've seen it done. Well, you have a decision to make then, don't you? 
to decide if it's worth the risk. It's terrible sight. Guys like turning to claymation and they just like Ugh. Ugh. Who's out? Ugh. That doesn't sound pleasant. But we will be closing soon. Oh, I, I didn't get to look at things. I was kind of possessed by some creepy guy who's allergic <laughs> to bananas. <laughs> which is the opposite of what my whole thing is. I will give you a moment to look around. Make up your minds, please. Yeah. Oh. And I'll be back with you shortly. You know, do you have like anything bespoke after you stare into my eyes and like this is exactly what you want? She looks towards you. She <laughs> leans over the, the basket and she looks down at you and stares into your eyes. There is nothing inside that head. Whoa. Damn. And she creeps back into the shadows and sits down. That being said, please roll a d10. <laughs> oh. Well, thank you. I like to consider myself very neat and tidy. <laughs> you know what they say? If it doesn't bring you joy, you should part with it. <laughs> An eight. So you <laughs> with that free thing. Got rid of the whole brain. A uh, d100. I blink it to My eyes blink. Uh, uh, yeah. Not insane. He's very open-minded. Oh, yeah, thank you. I'm very open-minded, Giddy. A fool. <laughs> wow. You got your divine intervention. I got to get divine intervention. In the meantime, as you are amongst yourselves, she is looking through the chest, trying to find something for you, uh, Gricko, and is leaving the rest of you to your devices. Uh, Bobble is once again in her seat. Um, you see that she is wrapping up the bundle of twigs, almost convinced that you will be buying them uh, as she smiles over at you and her eyes move between you and Twig, oh, who you damn. now notice is staring up at you. Gideon, did I hear you're gonna get twigs for Twig? Well, I'm trying, Twigsy, but they want they want my. What do they want again? Um, the they want the whimsical way you walk. <laughs> they want the rhythm in your step. They want the rhythm in my step, Twigsy. And if I'm honest with you, dancing's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's incredible. Oh, that's okay. Oh, I don't. God. I don't need anything from this once in a lifetime shop. Oh. <laughs> It's a opportunity. Oh, man. I will make you give up anything for me, kid. Look, oh, kid, it's, it's, it's just a bunch of sticks. We can go, you know, walk three feet and collect that. Oh, but she's doing the eyes, Crummy. She's doing the eyes, man. And Look at her. Is. Oh, you is. see her eyes welling up. They're filling with tears as she's choking back at her sobs. I'll never ask too much of you, kitty. It's, it's like the rain falling out of two damn moons sitting side by side, man. I'm on a break. Ugh. Look, let, let me put it this way. All right, kid? I got voodoo. I got hoodoo. I got things I ain't tried. But you, the way you walk that saunter, that's the voodoo and hoodoo that you do. Oh, man. It's Don't a cool give... thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give that up for the world, kid. Uh, you want to be good. Oh, my God. Well, God, I'm really torn between what's happening on the other side of me. Um, oh, God. Oh. Gideon, if you are going to make a train, why bundle of sticks? Get something nicer. Man, you're supposed to be the smart one, Frosty. Yeah, I am being the smart it's one. It's because her name's Twig. <laughs> that's my name, Frost. I know you forgot it, but that's okay. It's like a collection of twigs, man. Yeah. It's, it's calling like, her name. It's like little me. It's very but in wood form. I hadn't thought about it that way, you're right. I just thought of the value of one wolf stick. <laughs> Frost, I hate to tell you this, but gifts aren't about how much they cost or what they are. It's about the intention behind them, you know? And this was thoughtful. Get it in. was a thoughtful gift for Twig. I retract my statement. And so it's okay if you don't want to get up, give up your swagger for that special thing you wanted to get me unpromised. 
I see that you're really struggling, Gideon. <laughs> and it's very difficult for you to make a decision. Both, it's a, ve- it's a very hard decision to make. But in times like these, what you, what I do and what you should do is think about the time that we learned the decision-making framework when we met the Sugandis. Who are the Sugandis, man? The Sugandis nuts. God damn it! <laughs> I would like for you to roll a d20, please. I'm... That one I saw coming to my own. <laughs> Way too obvious. <laughs> the wonderful peoples of Sudan. <laughs> They're Sudan. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna let you know what happens I'll to show, you. I rolled a four on my D100. Yep. Yeah. Well, have you decided whether you're going to make your purchases or not? Oh, and as for you, uh, you are a. What are you? A goblin, of course, but. Yeah, thank you. I, I was gonna say, I felt like these are my people are from the fair world, I think. I've, feel a sense of magical ability about you. I get my powers from primal spirits You're what are druid, very of friendly. And I met and they helped get my life around. Uh, yes, okay, whatever druid. Um, <coughs> you, you use a weapon? My weapon are the spirits what call, I call upon. Oh, druids. And me friends. <laughs> and do you have an actual weapon you use? I... Or you just, oh, grass, do my bidding. No, it's not grass. It's more like the spirits of monsters and other friendly people that I'll make friends with. I don't know. Do I don't friends? like friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You Mostly with, like, animals and beasties and monsters mm. and, and gross things. And these guys, but I'll repeat myself. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't use weapons at all. Ah, uh, I mean, I could. I mean, I have all this right. cobweb gun. Well, this, this won't work for you at all. I mean, I could use a weapon now. I mean, depending on what it is. No, that's you have fine. Your thing. You have a thing. That's like your weapon, man. We will find I mean, I have me ocarina. Roll a d10. Well, your weapon's the okay. spoken word, man. <laughs> Five. <laughs> And a D100. Oh, you don't say. 51. Mm. No, I'm looking through this chest and I'm not finding anything for you. <laughs> I wanted to have a mysterious bargain. Unfortunate. I mean, I could provide you with a potion of storm giant strength, but... Uh, <laughs> it broke. Can you look, it you, broke. Can you, can you look in the back? It's like giving <laughs> Fine. I, no, I will look one more time for you if There's he agrees to buy the unicorn horn. <sighs> Torvika has, has had 57 minutes to, to make this swap. No, I already yeah, told him right. he did. Oh, you nice, did. nice. Oh, I forgot to tell you what my roll was for the sleight of hand. Oh, oh. I thought you did. Nope. Oh, what is it? I rolled an 18 and another natural 20. Oh, oh. Uh, easy. You um, were easily be easily able to, and you weep. You, 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 you were you were so lithe that she's moving around this basket, um, constantly getting into this safe and pulling out magical items. On occasion, she should have bumped into you, but you are so melded into the shadows that she notices nothing at all as you're able to just move behind her as she darts around. It is impressive. Once the deed is done, I would like to return to standing right beside Kremi as if I never left. And Torbeck is so stealthy because he is very easy to forget about. (laughs) So it's as if he was never gone. Fair. And Torbeck was here the whole time. So are you going to buy the unicorn horn or not? Wait, so just for him to buy something, I gotta buy something? You're all wasting my time. Come on, Kremi. Don't, don't, don't do this to me. 
You don't even know what it is. I know, but I guess. But it I could want be, it. It's a game. <laughs> it could be something really good. I can get a platinum eight star waifu. <laughs> I might be able to get my waifu the USS John McCain. <laughs> it could be the keys to a speedboat. I wish that sure. was me. <laughs> the the, the yeah, what? Um, no, they're, those are pens. Also, Bricko with a potion of frost giant strength is like giving a chimpanzee a machine. <laughs> <laughs> all right so all right so so what's the deal then if i buy this thing you take the color of my eyes and you get a unicorn horn. and i have the unicorn and then horn. we will take the we will take the bounce in your step and you will get these twigs and what can he buy I'd like to see what he will be able to purchase, and then maybe I I'll be considered. I have literally just explained the situation to you. Well, I'm trying to you bottle can, it up. Yes, you have tried and you have failed. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Right. Well, uh, <clears throat> I have one more question. I have set prices. May I ask my last question? Uh, sure. What's your return policy? <laughs> we have no return policy. Uh, I think that's legal in prison. I think All you're legally required. Fun. I think you're legally required to have a 14 day return policy. Well, I guess that was like the carnival. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no damn refunds. man! Oh. These guys oh. probably charge for us. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't offer us water when we came in here. Yeah. Ridiculous. Am I gonna take one for the team, fellas? I think we go for it, man. I mean, you want that unicorn horn? Imagine. You could have a unicorn compadre. I if you ever re- reunited with it. Yeah, I really, I really do want Damn, that'd really, be cool. It would be really cool. I'm in support of this now also. I have a feeling that if we do this, we're in, our, in our hour of need, that unicorn's going to come out and save us. Has anybody seen my horn? <laughs> I want to steal. <laughs> All right, damn it, I'll fucking do it. I love this. I'll extend we my have hand. a deal. She does not extend her hand in the way that you would have hoped. She reaches out and she swirls her hand and she pulls from your eyes two wisps of yellow and you watch as they turn oh, to weird. gold and begin to spin. Oh, this um, is so bad. She looks towards you and she says, you be mine. And as she does this, two replica creamy eyeballs appear in her hand. Do you have his eyes? Are his eyes wax? You look into his eyes. His eyes look exactly as they had been before. But oh. now, where the yellow had been, it is oh. just a slate gray. Oh. Let's look at my compact mirror. That's kind of cool. It yeah, actually looks thinking? a little badass. She takes the yeah, eyes yeah, I mean, and places you know. them into her pocket. All right. What's in the sink? Yeah, I actually agree. There's a uh, uh, quality about them. Gives you a, sort of a smoky look. More mysterious. Exactly. Yeah. Right. More, more mature. A little bit of salt and pepper. You yeah, know? yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. A, t- a, t- a touch of gray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Almost like I'm um, shadow touched, you know? Like of the shadow. Oh, no, are you wow. ready? Oh, let me get you your... Yeah, I was going to say, please. If you wouldn't mind. Roll a D10 for me, Gricko. Oh, D10. Mm-hmm. A five. Okay, uh, roll a d100. There's always at the back, you know. <laughs> they always got a whole bunch of stuff back there. A 41. Oh. Almost 42. Oh. 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 oh, it looks like for you we have a potion of storm giant strength. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Go get your unicorn horn. <laughs> and she goes and she gets oh. the unicorn horn. She wraps it up. And she stops for a moment and reaches back inside of the um, inside of the chest and she looks towards you. Though your head is empty, your heart is not. You have a daughter, don't you? I do. She holds up a cute little she holds up a cute little ugly Christmas sweater. Ugly Yuletide sweater that has um, owl bears and Santa hats all over it. A sweater. For your daughter. That is the best thing I've ever seen. <laughs> that is so fashion forward. And we all know that Hoochie's a little fashionista. It She's going not, to love it. It is not just simply a sweater. It will provide her additional protection in battle to keep those closest to you safe. All I require 
is your greatest joke? <laughs> oh man, tell her the handbush one. What? Tell her the handbush one. That's the best one. No, that was. And she hand. walks oh, over and hands you the unicorn horn. <laughs> <laughs> or, oh wait, she she walks over to you with the unicorn horn. She hasn't handed it over yet. I need some time to think. I got a lot of really good jokes. Mm. You don't get to choose. I already have a joke in mind. Oh, which one? The one that DM eats the most. <laughs> <laughs> but I was saving for the grand finale. <laughs> oh, it was going to be the rule of three, and no one's going to be expecting the last one as a cherry on a Sunday. <laughs> 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 Do we have a deal? Ah, uh, you drive a hard bargain, bubble or trinket. <laughs> trinket. Trinket. I knew it was trinket. That's why I said it's second. <laughs> the more recent that way. I, uh, yeah, it's more in your head. Ah, uh, the art of negotiation. You may have a one deal with me right now, presently. I don't trade very often. <laughs> she reaches forward and she tickles your stomach with her little <laughs> nails. And as, and as you chuckle, you watch as the laugh bubbles up into a, a an actual bubble and it floats through the air. And as it gets to her, <laughs> she swirls it around on her finger and pops it. And you hear in Grico's voice the words, these nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Grico can never again make a D's nuts joke. Amazing. We can thank Derek for that. He slipped me a note. He says, no. Come on, Grico. A nice sweater for Hootsie in exchange for all his D's nuts jokes. That's really well done. Yeah, that's really good. Well done. That's I can't thank Grego for that. That was Derek. Uh, but for the wow. sake of it, she does hand you over a uh, a plus one to armor um, oh. sweater for Oh, yeah. Nice. Mm. Joke's on her. That already ran its course. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to love it. That's the art of the deal. Uh, <laughs> baby! Uh, master negotiator. Oh, God. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. You're just going to love trinket. it. Thank you very pleasure. much, Trinket. I'm, to me. <laughs> I'm so glad you found that in the back. See, oh, there's always a back. Man, you were right. I thought you were going to be so, so wrong. would you but... like this bundle of sticks? <sighs> well, everybody's <sighs> doing it, Gideon. <laughs> that is what convinced me in this moment. It's not to be left out in the deals. I look down at Twig, whose eyes are like, uh, you know, pussy boots, and <laughs> when he wants it. <laughs> All right, just take it. Take it and give me the sticks. Lovely. Bubble, will you do the honors? Just don't do the chin thing to me, all right? Just do Bubble. it some other way. Bobble actually reaches to the side, to a shelf, um to the left and she pulls out a wooden marionette and as she begins to move it you feel your body dance along with it and as you dance you will watch as ropes strands move from Gideon's limbs to the marionette and the marionette captures his swagger and his walk exactly as he had had it uh, Bobble begins to chant one two three one two three one two three one two three it is done. <sighs> Deprived of your rhythm, you lose all talent for dancing. But she hands you uh, the bundle of sticks. Is it doing anything cool? What is the bundle of sticks? It's great. What you want. No, no, that's it. Great. Thank you. Thank you. It's a plus one. Is that for me? Is that for me? Did you get that for me? Twigsy. I knew you would love it, all right? Here you go. A bundle of sticks. She looks at all the sticks and, don't like that one. Don't like that one. <laughs> don't like that one. This one's too short. She breaks one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm <not> cute. 
<laughs> I'm the cute, I guess. Oh, oh yeah. But this one's so cool. And she starts waving it around, and you realize that she's not holding a stick. She's holding a wand. The Elder Wand. I want to get up! She says calmly to you. Yeah. That's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, she's she's looking at this beautifully Uh gnarled piece of wood that has been shaped and molded into what is clearly a wand. And at the very tip of it, um, you see that it is covered in uh, step mushrooms and other bits of uh, algae and fungi. And at the very tip of it, there is a beautiful black or part of a beautiful black diamond. Well, damn, that's pretty cool. Wow. Gideon, this is so cool. I'm uh, very powerful now. Thank you very much. Boo, boo, boo. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Everyone dies. <laughs> <laughs> well, twi- twigs for a twig. I'm glad you're happy, Twigsy. Thank you, me too. Sorry that you walk like that now. <laughs> Do you... <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm gonna look at him. <laughs> Was it worth it? Well, I don't know. It depends on what the wand could do, man. Honestly, I mean, it's like, you know, if it like, kills witches in the bag, it's probably. But <laughs> Let me see that toy. You're just gonna have to sure. put me in a wheelchair and wheel me around the swamp, all right? <laughs> it's a wand of walking properly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God! Get incredible. Nice. Listen, I didn't know. Oh, fantastic. Well, I'm glad it wasn't too bad a price. For, for me, I thought that she was gonna, I was gonna have to become a mind goblin. What's a mind goblin? Riggle, what's a mind goblin, man? Help me out. I've never was, heard of it. A psionic. I don't understand, man, but I like finish the thought. Why would you ask me what's a mind goblin if you can't articulate what's a mind goblin? You run into that, like, is that what Glorbo was? Is Glorbo a mind goblin? A single tear will run down my cheek. I don't like, understand. Is he just not talking? Did something happen to him? No, I don't know. Okay. A psionic. Speaking nonsense. A psionic know. practitioner after learning. The art of the mind from Frosty. That is oh, exactly yeah. correct. That's Just, that's uh, what a mind goblin is. A goblin that minds <laughs> like with his brain. No, my mind mind goblin. Something about brain. Yeah. No, yeah. That's what a mind goblin is. Okay. Yep. I thought that's what I was gonna have to, to do to you psionic sauna. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Another tear will go down my cheek. And as you are saying this, you begin to feel the magics of the witch light overcome you. As I thought you forgot about that. I did not. Sorry. I just have to remember which one. As you realize you are unable to control your own volume, speaking either too quietly or too loudly. You know, it was... What the show? <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> <sighs> Can you just give me the fucking unit going home and get the hell out of here? Oh, oh yeah. I'm Please. So, I've loved doing business with all of you. And now, with this final exchange, Bobble and Charms is closed. She puts up the closed sign and hands you the unicorn horn. Oh. <laughs> uh, how does it feel when I hold it? Uh, it's vibrating Great. with a magical energy, but you imagine that this case that it's in buffers that, and you wouldn't really get uh, a true uh, understanding of what it's capable of unless you physically held the unicorn horn, which she would not allow you to do. But now I'm, I'm holding it, right? Well, it's you're, mine now. you're holding the case. <laughs> you would have to open the case it's and hold the unicorn, oh. but yes, it is It is yours now. It's in a little display case? Yes, it's in a display case. All right. Pleasure doing business with you, I guess. Was it? Well, was it? Glad I hate the chest um, out of the box. Do you have dark vision? <clears throat> Not anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> did they, uh, Lizard folk do not believe have dark vision. Wow, that really looks amazing up close. Oh, you can see it says a Hitachi on the side. <laughs> <laughs> the oh. <Yoko> collection. <laughs> uh, where do I see that? Uh, is that oh, oh, ability save sense. It's, hold on. I do not have dark vision. Cool. You <laughs> still don't have dark vision. <laughs> All right. Hey, hey Tobek. Uh, 
<laughs> you successfully false flag! Everybody right in there, we got it. Why to do? Enjoy the color and whatever else he traded, his walk and his <laughs> yeah. joke. Oh. <laughs> yep. What, what I'm doing? trying to walk away, man. I just don't look at me. Well, you don't normally lift your knees so high. That's very weird. <laughs> it's just, I don't know how else to do it anymore. <laughs> just, just walk like naturally. It's a, yeah, I'm trying. I'm just, let me. <laughs> it, no, 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 no. Just because he, he lost rhythm, can't, no, no, no. Surely you haven't lost that much rhythm. Just one, two, one, two, right? You you look like you're trying to walk across the desert and not attract the attention of the shy Hulud. <laughs> <laughs> Can you please walk normally? Yes, that's much better than that. <laughs> 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 what was that? Because we're never going to get away from you. What was it? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> we carry on. <laughs> So you you make your way um, down the path from Bobble and Charms, and you turn to look back, and you see that the lightning, uh, that the storm cloud is roiling, um, but it, it doesn't it doesn't look like Bobble and Charm are running the shop any longer. Where they've gone, who knows? Uh, but there there is a big closed sign at the front of the shop, and all is quiet. The sounds of cicadas singing off in the distance can be heard. Uh, and there is a lot of noise and revelry coming from the <clears throat> soggy palace that is just up the path and around the corner. I did it, guys. I was going to say, we all got something. Did we <laughs> make an exchange? Uh, you could say that, yeah. So you have the other book with you. Ta-da! <laughs> I, I totally it. forgot about that. <laughs> what, what's the other book? Oh, Torbeck didn't look. It's wrapped in a similarly disgusting cloth. <laughs> it's yours now if you want it. Uh, perhaps it'll be of some value to you. <laughs> you do? Oh, that's great. It's, it's a leather bound tome, and what had looked like an empty wizard spell book, you see, is clearly a tome of something. But it is it is written in runic languages and languages all across the plains, and it is far beyond your comprehension of understanding. Oh, Torba can't read this. <laughs> Oh, well. And Torbeck will wrap it back up and stick it back in the filthy sack. All right, that's cool and all, but... Yeah! <laughs> Here you go. You, uh, you didn't need to yell that. Rusty! <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're, are you feeling the influence of Witcher Light Red? No! <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's, he's, he's under the influence of the Witch Light. Oh, uh, again? This happened to me early. No! <laughs> yes. I don't really know. It just... I feel fine. It doesn't really feel that different. It is a little <laughs> hard to tell that it's not just him being him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice sweater! <laughs> Just think about the sweater while we make our way to the castle. <laughs> All right! <laughs> I do not communicate with him with my mind. I, I do not even start to go there. I'm <laughs> smart enough not to do that. I can't believe we committed a false flag! <laughs> two, two passers by. Ooh. <laughs> oh, my. You knew what they said. Oh. Uh, I open the universe box and you I do? touch it. Oh, no. <laughs> You open the box and the radiant light shoots out everywhere and you are all uh, encircled uh, by this light and it is brilliant and it is warm and it is beautiful and it feels good. Not in the normal sense, but in the benevolent sense. There is, a, there is an aura of kindness and joy while you're standing in this shroud of prismatic light. And as you reach forward and touch the horn, it vibrates in your hand, this thrumming of magic and power. As your eyes go white 
Oh. It is on vibrator. <laughs> that is pretty fucking good. Oh, oh, it's the frother that comes with that <laughs> shitty mushroom tea. <laughs> 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 There's definitely a bad dragon joke in here somewhere. Oh, it's handy that it glows in the dark, you know? <laughs> it doesn't do that. You it's know what? It doesn't cute. do anything. It's a fake. It's just chalk. No, I'm kidding. It's That's how I know Tiffany's going when it's that ringtone. <laughs> you. Your eyes go pure white and you all watch as Kremi's body goes completely rigid and his eyes turn this strange pearlescent light um, and you see that his his face is moving like he's taking in tons of information all at once and Kremi, you see a beautiful glade green grass a an emerald river with a beautiful grassy knoll in the very center the river rings around it and lying in the sun beneath a tree is a beautiful white unicorn, young and, and happy and joyful. And you realize that you are looking through the eyes of a child, the eyes of a young boy, as he's on the banks hand in hand with a beautiful young girl. They're staring out at this unicorn, he points and she laughs and smiles. They rummage around in a in a sack together and you see that it's filled with toy soldiers and dolls and different beasts and wild things of the Feywild and they sit on the banks they build a house out of sticks and and leaves and other and other uh, fauna that they find flora flora that they find on animals <laughs> I'm imagining the taking the possum and just like this will be the roof <laughs> Fuck! You make one mistake, man. These birds and it ruins me. Good morning. (laughs) Can I? Can I please tell you what you're saying without jokes, face? (sighs) And they build. They build a house together, and they giggle and they laugh, and their friendship is beautiful. As they stare out at this unicorn that doesn't even seem to notice them, but it is definitely clear that the light from this horn. A horn that you now feel incredibly attuned to as you hold on to it are one and the same. The light from that horn casts a powerful glow over this glade that makes everything look just as you would expect, more prismatic, more beautiful, more happy. And it is a glorious memory as all of a sudden it begins to shift and crack. And you're looking out at this glade and it is still beautiful though the light has dimmed a bit as you see the unicorn laying there. It's gotten older, it's not as young. The light from the horn is not as strong. As you're looking out at the eyes of no longer a young boy, but a young man, as he stares alone at the unicorn. And in his hand is a broken toy. The light shifts and changes and you find yourself back in that glade It's no longer beautiful. It's no longer green. Lightning crackles overhead as storm clouds roll in. And the unicorn weeps as its horn is no longer present. It causes no light to shine in this area. And you see that all around it in circles, the edges of the glade, are these large metal towers, almost like lightning conductors. And you watch as the sky uh, roils with storm clouds. And as the lightning shoots off, it connects with one of these rods. And you see the lightning bounce from one to the next, creating almost like a cell, a prison for this unicorn. Its horn no longer attached. And you realize that you are looking through not the eyes of a young boy, but the eyes of a man. And as you look down, you see boots. <clears throat> Boots you have seen before. Boots you recognize. But wasn't that only a dream? As the image cracks and you find yourself back in Hither with your friends holding onto this unicorn horn, wondering what this vision is that you saw before you. 
I have like tears in my eyes. Well, was it worth it? I made a terrible mistake. You okay, man? Unicorn's missing his horn, and he's probably in a lot of pain. Mr. Cranny, are you all right? We gotta get somewhere private, all right? We don't know who's fucking listening. You see any fucking owls anywhere? I start looking for owls. You're looking, you see Owls, none. no owls? No. Let's skip to the castle and perhaps we can find a private quarter where, uh... Keep your voice down, Frosty! Bring a scared doorman! I'm, I'm endeavoring to do so. It's important. Can you see Grammy? What? Can you see Grammy's playing? Say that again in my mind. I, just, I couldn't quite hear you and you, when you whisper like that. Can you see Grammy's distress? He's very hot! <laughs> <laughs> we need to keep it down! <laughs> and for the sake of your voice, Mike, and your sinus infection yeah. that I forgot about, uh, you feel the magic spade. <laughs> he was like clutching his heart. <sighs> oh, I thought that was the big one, fellas. <laughs> Oh, drink a game, turn back a fib. Wait, what are you looking for? Let's go to a quiet place. <laughs> yeah, surely we'll be able to find a quiet place uh, uh, when we have the the king's grace and 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 uh, our our titles. All right. I mean, I just as long as we get somewhere private, and then maybe y'all can touch it as well. And, See what you see. Well, the, oh, the, the, the horn? Yeah, 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 the fucking horn. What the fuck you think I mean? Just making sure. Wait, what? Second time that's happened today. <laughs> well, that's why don't we, should we talk about it maybe before we get to the castle, though? Yeah, I mean, there's, a whole, there's a whole big uh, shindig happening over there. We're gonna, this is like a way, everybody's at the castle right now. There's not going to be any private moments over there. Uh, everyone will be distracted, especially if we have some sort of quarters or something. Yes, I assumed we would have a place to be just ourselves for a moment, at least, before we have to join in the festivities. Maybe. What if they have, like, an event coordinator that's always talking to us and is coming in every 20 seconds to say, like, hey, you ready for, hey, you ready for an electrical chef? Then we'll stab them through the heart with the unicorn <laughs> horn and we'll continue on our way. Damn, I like no, this new yeah. frosty. All right, to the castle. No, no. That's not the ace thing. No, yeah, no, okay. no I mean, yeah, no, that's crazy, man. <laughs> We've already come No fear, no fear. We've already the compromised. <laughs> I've compromised our morals quite a bit. And you know if we go, if we have private quarters, Kremlin will be like, hey, what to do, what to do. Well, what I saw was, oh, you're up in five minutes. <laughs> and like, okay, what I was saying was, oh, do you need anything? And then we'd be forced to kill him. <laughs> so we, we, can, we That's can't. a good point. No, convince me. Say, say no more, Greco. What do you like, say a no hot towel? <laughs> You know it's going to happen. That's exactly what would happen to us. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, man. I mean, a hot towel, though. It's just every time we're in an event, there's always a coordinator, and they're always asking about towels. There's nowhere else to go. Why don't we just go right there? That's a totally private cave. Oh, yes. Let's go inside the dark, scary cave that suddenly emerged in the Is there a scary right swamp cave? Did I miss that? Sure. In my... All right. Oh, oh, let's go into the fucking cave. Yeah. And we'll have a confusing experience with our father. We'll see our father emerge from a mask, and then we'll wi- leave shakingly. It'll be a little strange. What, are you saying my dad's in there? Yes. I never met him. Torbeck doesn't want any of that. We'll get to cut his head off first, and then yes. you can see Oh, it. no. I don't want to cut me dad's head off but then your dad's gonna be you yes. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> and he was the skeleton all along Thank you. uncle globo used to sing a song about something like that <laughs> anyway let's go uh, yeah. for you i imagine it might be, <coughs> be your uncle actually we go into the dark spooky cave that emerged oh do you we do yeah, you make your way towards a rocky outcropping um, and you do find a cave it is covered in moss, um, and it is damp and dank. And as you get inside, um, there are these strange glowing mushrooms that 
puff and uh, let off spores. The air is filled <laughs> with fungal spores. All right. Look, when I touch the horn... You begin to hallucinate. <laughs> I saw the color of schmopple. And mm-hmm. what is that? Man? Right. And then the unicorn was there and it was like all the clocks. It was it was <laughs> What? what I love that? I love unicorns. I, they're, they're beautiful. Okay, we know we've established that quite a bit already. Uh, anybody else okay, instantly man? hallucinating because of these mushrooms for us? <laughs> <laughs> was that canon, Dungeon Mistress? Oh. <laughs> oh, man. I, just, I mean, just the walls are peeling rainbows, but that seems normal for around here. I, I mean, mean, I guess it was this unicorn horn, anything's possible. How can we be in a cave right now? This is a swamp. Wouldn't it have flooded long ago? This is impossible what we're in. I'm the king of the swamp. <laughs> I'm the swamp meister. You the swamp? You're Mr. Swamp Meister. You're Mr. Stank. Oh, um, that's nice. No, I can't tell if I'm just. Oh, real thank high you, or if this is happening. I've somehow managed to moisturize even in our adventure. <clears throat> Twig, your mm. eyes are like big pools. Thanks. I'm eating juice out of the bottom of this toadstool over here. Oh, classic twig. Licking mushrooms <laughs> yeah. and drinking right out of, you know, drugs. <laughs> <laughs> drinking right out of drugs. And drinking right out of drugs. An elder angered evil polar bear spirit just mauled my left arm off. Uh, <laughs> he said, nice, nice, as he tore it off. It did? And he kicked me down a fire hole. It did? And now he's swimming away with my arm. Come back, did. evil polar bear spirit. Torbeck is just on the ground of mouth, on the cave floor, just like doing a brush stroke. I wonder what's on the scroll that I secured with my fear. That won't be relevant at all. <laughs> uh, <laughs> did you feel fear, Frosty? I need you all to roll a wisdom saving throw for me, please. At disadvantage, because you're hallucinating. Fuck it. Twig. Uh-oh. Oh, think can't. she's Miss Sam drinking out of drugs. Can't hold them all hot. <laughs> I got a 12. <laughs> I got an 11. <laughs> Five. Uh, oh, disadvantage. Wait, yep. what? I don't even know what I'm doing. Disadvantage. With Sam. With Sam. Saving through a disadvantage. Uh, 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 five. It's nine. I got a dormant got a 12. Eight. <clears throat> 15. 15. <clears throat> you all feel your con- your, um, you all feel yourselves coming. Um, sorry, I'm eating egg drop soup. <laughs> you all feel excuse yourselves. Me. <laughs> excuse me. Excuse me. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Punched you 20 times. You would die. Just to make sure I'm on the side of the right page. I come from a long, proud line of murderers. We all feel ourselves coming. Is what you say. I'm like an eyeball or maybe a tooth. Anyone else feel that? For a that? whole week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just can't stop. <laughs> I just can't stop. <laughs> no matter what you do, you can't stop coming. Oh, oh man. man. I, I, think, I, think, I think this is the entrance to the ghost stream. <laughs> ghost stream. We're going to the ghost stream. I think we have to go deeper into this cave. <laughs> 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 Remember to stay home. Ross wants to borrow that Hitachi, man. <laughs> <laughs> you, um, you are all hallucinating wildly, and you have spun yourself around and walked so deep into this cave, you can no longer find the way the way out. As you, as you feel a lightheadedness overtake you, and you notice as you walk deeper in. You see a mushroom that you have only heard about before. As you go deeper and deeper in, you see that it takes the shape of a witch's hat. And its underside is pulsing with a magenta light. As magenta spores fly up into the air around it and circle around all of you. And you feel yourselves begin to lose consciousness. You wake up. 
You are lying in the swamp. There is no rocky outcropping and no cave. I knew it. It doesn't feel like much time has passed at all. And as you look off to the side, you see that very clearly, Bobble and Charms has just closed. You actually notice that Bobble walks back up towards the basket and takes something out, puts something back, and walks back down the uh, the dock, heading somewhere off in the opposite direction. But the moon seems to be at the same point in the sky, and the sounds of jubilation are still present at the sog- at the soggy castle. That cave you had just been in. That's not here, or it never was. Or it was, but it's not here now. And you all have benefited from a long rest. My resource, my very precious, precious Dungeons and Dragons resources. (laughs) So precious. Sometimes Uh. we have to remember that we are playing a game with resources. (laughs) Wow, that's huge. Okay. Back into the session. I uh, feel refreshed after those strange uh, cave mushrooms. You wake up on the ground. It is soft and wet beneath your backs, and the cave is nowhere to be found. We just did the mushroom samba from uh, yeah. that would be bad. <laughs> <laughs> mushroom hunting. Well, mushroom hunting. <laughs> feel surprisingly refreshed. Does everyone else feel okay? What? What the fuck was that? What was that? I knew it. Oh, accidentally. Hi. Wait, wait. Oh, I knew it. This is all connected. I saw, I saw that mushroom before. What mushroom? Are you the only one that's seen it? With that that short fella. The the dwarfy looking guy. Yeah. Oh. The dwarf esque fellow. Yeah, he was dwarf esque. But not full dwarf. You know, it just yeah. he reminded me. Like like a fade dwarf. I don't even know. Oh, I don't but, know. You tell me. I don't know. He was very hairy. Anyways, we saw that, and then you said that you had the unicorn arm, or was, you had a dream or a vision. Oh, this is fucking t- is anybody around? I don't think so. All right, no fucking owls. Nope, no owls. Okay, I saw a, I saw a vision. I was looking through the guy's eyes. The, you know. And I'll like gesture to tour back, and I'll be like, you know what I mean? Yeah. The guy on the throne. What? Do, what did we see of his? Did we only see his boots, or did we you see his whole person? You only saw his boots. We have not seen him. Didn't we see the doctor's boots? Or we saw that guy? We saw the doctor's boots too. You, we saw, you saw these boots when you saw the dwarf-esque entity walk into the throne room. And you saw his legs crossed. One, That's he was right. sitting on the uh, throne. You saw one leg cross over the other. You saw his very tight pants and his boots. And his huge bulge. And his huge bulge. Torbeck I was clearly inspired by something. <laughs> Torbeck doesn't like this. Does that mean that they're closer to finding us? No, 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 it can't be. No, I think that's exactly what this means. No. I, I, he was, I saw he was a boy and he was an adolescent and then he was a, an adult and, and he he was with a, another friend. Was it a, like a like a play like a playmate in the beginning? Uh, in, in the, the very first image you saw, he was holding hands with a young girl roughly his age. Yeah, he was with the girl probably, his age. They were like maybe 12 When, what did what did he look like? Yeah. You were looking through his eyes. Oh, duh. <gasps> yeah. I saw his feet. <laughs> what did she look like? What did she look like? She was rosy cheeked, bright eyed, uh, happy. Uh, she didn't. There was nothing. I would say there were no defining features about her that caught your. What about mind. species? You human. Roll a perception check. Tun tun tun. Uh, surely you also saw the, the, the sort of transparent nose just in front of the eyeballs. The twist, it, twist, it, twist, twist it, twist it, twist it, twist it, twist it, twist it. Twist it. It's a little late for the for a curse. I don't, I, we, don't, we don't do that anymore. We don't do that oh, anymore. Oh, it's too late for a curse. Okay, it's one better. Yeah. Uh, what a terrible we'll night to it. have a curse. Oh, what a terrible uh, night. Uh, fourteen. She appeared to be at least humanoid. She, to you, she appeared to be a human. Yeah, I mean, I think she was a human, but like, 
Humans don't live in the fair wild, right? I mean, she was humanoid. So you ass. didn't notice any pointy ears. Yeah. I didn't notice didn't the crazy notice. pointy ears of the Eladrin. I didn't notice any kind of elf stuff. I mean, she was just human. Everybody we've seen here has had pointy top ears, right? But Unless they, they were frog like. But then. Or rabbit like. They were in this glade, and that's where the unicorn was. You're saying this guy that, that had Torbeck is tied up with the unicorn somehow? I think, I think it's. Oh, he took bad. the horn from that unicorn. Oh, this is so bad. He took it. He did. He cut it off the unit. Wait. I want to. I want to look at the end of the horn and see if anything about where the horn was cut or removed. And maybe it was just, it's been polished and sanded and it's beautiful. But if it hasn't, does it remind me of anything about Lexi's wounds from episode one? When her wings were removed. And I hate to be a Dungeons Dungeon and Dragons player like this, uh-huh. but can I use my woodworking and like bone carving expertise to help to assist Grimmy? You can roll at advantage oh. to roll a perception check to see what you see. Can I use one of Gid's dice and one of Grimmy's dice yeah. at the same time? Yeah. This is it. After 20, here it comes. It's still pretty good. Wow. Kind of nice. What was the skill? Sorry. It perception. Uh, perception. Is that, is that my dice? Yeah. I don't oh, is it used? Uh, yeah. Well, it looks no like it looks so bad. Yeah, it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> 20. I, I gave it to him. You used, you were the one who used the 20? bad you mojo. You begin to inspect the base of the unicorn horn, and you notice that there is a dark ring around the edge where there was clearly some sort of slice or some sort of tool that was used to pry it from the head of the unicorn. And your mind immediately goes back to the carnival. And you remember your first inclination was that the wings that had been removed from the fairy had been cauterized because of the dark markings. But now that you look at it up close like this, now that you're not confronted with the sadness and the horror that that creature felt in those moments, you realize that it is not ash in the sense that you would expect, um, but it is, um, it is sulfur. And you think back and you remember the faint smell of eggs that had lingered in the air and you hadn't noticed. It is very clear that whatever severed those wings also severed this one. That was was bad. That's what Torbeck said! This fucking guy. He's the one that killed Lexi. Fucking look! These pots! Yeah! I'm gonna cut off the wings. Oh, it does kind of look like the same cut. Well, what the hell is he doing? Like collecting like creature parts, magical wings and horns? Like what what the hell is that all about? He's got some way to somehow maim these supposedly immortal and you know, magical powerful creatures. I mean whatever the fuck it is, it's leaving this sofa behind. What does it have to do with Torbeck? Why would this why would this guy who's did he cut anything off of you, Torbeck? No, not the Torbeck nose! It's the and same. once where Torbeck's penis had been. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, I already I got close long by that. It's, it's still half as long as it normally is. Torbeck used to step on it. <laughs> I can only drape it over my shoulder. Torbeck. Yes, Grego. Can you do us a big, big favor? For your best friends and mates. Torbeck can try. Can you try to remember anything about this guy? Anything about the guy with the boots and the, you know, the, and the pants? <laughs> the pants. <laughs> uh, Torbeck, Torbeck has tried. Torbeck can try again, but no. Torbeck, Torbeck has tried. I don't think there's anything left. Torbeck. I think whatever the fuck... We know of him. He he's given us. Why would he want Torbeck of all people? Why would he do all this to you? I mean, oh, who would do this to anybody? There's no way that the contents of those containers are like ground up 
creature parts. No! It's okay. It's okay, Tobin. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. That's very unlucky. He's an idiot. He doesn't know nothing about face stuff. It's, it's, it's a silly thing. Frost is thinking about what everyone's saying and what Gideon said just now. Uh, and the mushroom that we saw in the cave, the witch hat mushroom. The witch light, yeah. The witch light mushroom. Well, it creates witch light, but yeah. Um, that answers my question. It, 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 it seems unreasonable that it would be ground apart. It would be... Well, we don't... That would have produced the juice. Is I, that deduction I fair? Would, I would say connection? with Frost's intellect, that deduction would be fair, that the colors are the same, but not necessarily that witch light is only mm-hmm. the spores mm-hmm. of that. It is clearly the main ingredient. And you just did you describe the mushroom to us after? Oh, uh, in uh, elaborate detail. <laughs> I thought that we all saw the ad. Mushroom. You did in the cave, yeah. yeah. You all saw in the cave, all saw in the cave. But in the, in the vision, cave, when I saw from vision, Dr. Mario's yeah. eyes, I mean, the strange dwarf fellow's eyes, <laughs> I saw the, the mushroom and I would have relayed that previous. Okay. Uh, Didn't we all put together that, like, the mushroom is basically like. Yeah, but we don't know what kind of strange fey alchemy. Probably not. Probably not fey parts and unicorn parts. They're oh, certainly not. Oh, jeez. What if it is? But we don't know what kind of crazy. I mean, I don't know nothing about no alchemy. Do Whatever's you? in there is at least somewhat different than the shit that we've been hot, hot, hyped up on. Yeah, but think about what it does to him, man. Like we just go kind of fucking cuckoo bananas for a little bit. He goes fucking ribble Torbeck. No, yeah. no, no, Torbeck, no, Torbeck, Torbeck is Torbeck. That was a legend. Ah. And look, this other fella that. Shows up when Torbeck goes away, right? Mm-hmm. Uh huh. Whatever his name is, we haven't gotten his name. All right. Maybe there's ground up unicorn horns and fairy wings or something in it too. I I, I don't know. Don't think that's unreasonable. There are strange material components in any world. Uh, the 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 bone of some creature. Uh, we we heard uh, uh, Trinket say it herself just now when we went to the shop. And there are there are sometimes man, uh, consumable parts of animals that are as valuable as any plant or mushroom. Well, so anyway, there was this unicorn, beautiful glade, wonderful, bright in summertime. I don't know. They were having a good old time, and then it fast forward. And they were kids. And they were kids. And then he was older, and the girl was gone. And he seemed. I felt sadness. I felt like I was feeling his sadness and. And then it fast forwarded again, I think, if I'm remembering correctly, and and it was like uh, storming, and it was dark and cloudy, and the the unicorn was in some sort of prison, and the horn was gone. It's alive though. I mean, that's the good news. The unicorn's alive, but but he was he was an old you know man, and I saw his boots. It's the same fucking boots. Thundercloud, like the thundercloud they got over there. Look anything like that? I'm not sure if it's exactly the same. It looked very similar to the <gasps> storm that's roiling yeah, above the, was the basket. Pretty damn similar, Gid. I would say it would be an easy deduction to say that the image you were seeing was somewhere in Yon. Yeah, the image I was seeing, I think, might be from where those fellas are from, which is the realm of Yon. Uh, Torbeck doesn't like this. Can we just go back to the carnival? That was fun. That <laughs> was fun. The carnival's not coming back for eight years, Torbeck. Uh, but it's already been so long. But it was only fun because those fucks, Mr. Witch and Mr. Light, was in league with the hags and maybe this guy too. What if they were totally fine? What if there's a guy who's cutting off everything? And they're like, oh, it's fine. We have a carnival here. Oh, oh if he cut the horn, man. And then and then these jokers got the horn. And they came from Yon. How the hell did they get it? They had to have gotten it from him. And if you're saying their storm cloud or storm cloud just like it was, was in this vision, then, they, I mean, they're all in fucking cahoots. Yeah, I agree, Gib. I think you're right. Whatever that means, we need to figure out why the fuck he wants you. Why he cares about what the fuck's going on up there. Dorman just wants to go home. Do you? Well, A, you are home. You're with us. 
we're at home, right? Yeah, Vos, we'll, we'll say it. Yeah, well, I'll say like, hey, you know, when Krubby's like, oh, he was born in Ogway. Do you think that's home? No, it's scary, Mister Guru's there. That ain't. That's not a place. Yeah, home is wherever you, you, your best people are, your best folks, your lads, your mates, and there's nowhere we can run to. Well, this fella probably can't find you. So we got to figure out what his game is, what his angle is. And how smart and how tough could he be, huh? I mean, he can easily imprison a unicorn, cut up its horn, and just fucking toss it like it's nothing. Oh. Or maybe it was stolen, or maybe it was traded away, given. Maybe they had something that he needed. That's Uh-oh. probably what it is. Maybe they, he traded something that's a part of whatever the fuck Torbeck has going on. Listen, man, there's no way he's tougher than all five of us together, right? And it's like Gricko's saying. He's got to be coming after Torbeck, all right? There's nowhere, there's no home, there's no carnival, there's nowhere we can go. He won't stop looking for you. That much is clear. There's going to come a time we're all going to have to face him, and and he's going to be coming for you, but you won't have to stand against him alone, all right? We're going to do it together, and we're going to see it coming. Gideon is going to punch him so hard in the body, he's going to laugh until he dies. Yeah, and he's probably going to shit his pants first. Yeah. <laughs> and after. Yeah, and It'll after. probably be both. I think it happens twice. Yeah. Okay. It's a horrible smell, but you won't it's, notice. It's <laughs> it's going to be okay, Torbeck. We're not going to let him take you, no matter what. What I do worry, and I mean, hey, uh, I'm, not, I'm not as paranoid as uh, uh, as others. But I do have a, a, a little bit of a fuck in the back of my head. What if, Torbeck, you didn't escape, per se, and instead you was released? On account of you tracked us down exactly where we was. Well... Torbeck supposes that your logic <laughs> checks out, but Torbeck isn't really sure. Torbeck woke up in the end. Very confused. Man, that's a little suspicious, ain't it? But Torbeck promises that Torbeck is telling the truth. I trust you, Torbeck. I know you wouldn't lie to us. Me too. And we know that you would never be spying on or doing anything at the behest of the guy with the boots. Torbeck doesn't even know who that guy is. But what about the other guy? What if he knows who he is? Do you think the other guy would ask us answer questions? I'm not suggesting anything. I was going to, and we haven't had a moment to rest. No. Probe his mind and perhaps see if I could meet the other. <gasps> Wait, what other guy? Oh, Ribble Torbet. Is that uh, no, Ribble. this is Mr. Ribble. I'm talking about uh, Gorbeck. Mr. No, you know how he always says, like, yeah. t- Torbet <laughs> slash Ribble. Yeah, uh, no, he yeah. named him himself. Yeah. yeah. What, was it? what was it? Well, what, he named him? Yeah, it was Torbe- Torbeck slash Ribble. Oh, and I've just been saying Ribble slash Torbeck. I yeah. preferred the other one. Yeah, it's just like the go. reverse, you know? Like his reverse self. Like his- oh, like Count Sorf. Exactly, oh, like yeah. Count Sorf, man. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I don't care for that name in convention either. Anyway. I was just more <laughs> thinking about the bullywugs that are riding in the swamp right now. But, oh. uh, <laughs> at least 37. <laughs> <laughs> it's a blood thirsty culture. Yeah, that is dedication. Ones, yeah, the countless bully ones that you bury. So, Frosty, that's not a bad idea. I just don't want you to go too far and and to do anything to hurt, hurt Torbeck. No, I would never hurt Torbeck. Uh, and, and honestly, taking such an action might put me at the most risk. But I think it's worth worth that risk if we learn something from the experience. Now is not the time, however. Uh, I was just gonna say. No. We need to get back to the castle. I, 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 I feel somehow we're charged by our experience in the cave. And you need to be at full fucking strength for whatever we're about to 
fucking face going into that castle. What do you mean? I just, who knows what we're going to be up against. These people, you know, like Grico said, they're bloodthirsty and violent. And they like a good show, and who knows if we have to deal with the hag. Well, oh yeah, if Bad Lauren is there, things could take a turn real quick. Exactly right. I'm going to be as conservative as I can with my uh, energies. Uh, we can do the uh, the cooking thing and. Uh, we no, go that's nothing. Yeah. And there's a show, dinner and a show. Oh yes, yeah, so there was a show, right? Oh jeez, <laughs> I forgot about that. Well, let's oh, just, we get let's to watch a show. It in, and then we'll. Yeah, uh, opera or something. That could be fun. They're putting on an opera. Oh no, we're putting on an. Opera. We're putting on an opera. Oh, yeah. oh I think man! That's what you're Don't worry. Um, Kremi may be the world's greatest showman. But I, they've called me the P. Hantum of the opera before. <laughs> oh, this is going to be the poetry contest <laughs> all over again. Oh, man. I don't know why they would want to see us perform a, an opera. An opera? I've been noodling in my noggin. Look, Toby, you let Grico handle the P-hoetry. Oh. Beos, <laughs> what? <laughs> what is, that, is that a him job or like you know? I heard it as soon as I said it. Grico, you've been holding out on the pihos. <laughs> uh, what? <laughs> what? I don't know what you're referring to, Gideon. Well, I don't know. Crummy just said you got pihos all over the no, place. No pihoetry. Pihoetry. Uh, what's what's what that, man? It? It's like like yeah. the study of romantic relations with other goblins. <laughs> Uh, again, keep in mind, Torbeck is a visual learner. <laughs> <laughs> we should probably move on. Oh, yeah, we can, we'll demonstrate. You can take notes. <laughs> Draw yeah. pretty pictures. Maybe someone's already done the opera, and then we can just avoid it entirely. I don't have much of a singing voice. You frosty your finger. They're trying to tap into their inner ligma. What's uh, ligma? Their inner what? Duh, fuck! <laughs> I don't get it. What is that? Like the spirit of song? Uh, it's, How does that uh, help them at the it's, opera? It's a frog thing you wouldn't understand. Oh, well, Let's... I don't know why you'd even fucking say it, then. <sighs> is, that really, is there a lot of dancing in operas? I've seen a few, but uh, it was a long time. Ago. My understanding, given on what a kangaroo court this place seems to be, <laughs> they probably don't know what an opera is. <laughs> That's so as long as we just put on a nice, pleasant play that makes them feel nice, and we can use it as political propaganda. <laughs> oh. I've been noodling. I gotta ask you, Grigo, how the fuck do you know so much about politics? What do you mean? I just feel like you're like, oh, I'm, I'm super dumb. I don't know anything. <laughs> but I like animals, and somehow I know about constitutional republics and, and oh, blood that blood king monarchy. The, yeah, the king I, I, I and the early. troll and the snails. That was a good time. Yeah, and the and French Revolution. Informatic. <laughs> I mean, I, I did take political science at Goblin College. That was my major, but I, you know, I took a lot of classes. Political science major. All right. That well, they didn't, they didn't have a, a, a major for rock and roll. <laughs> you know, well, I know, I cool bands. <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, you know, it's you guys I mean, gonna make your way to the castle anytime soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're already on our way. Yeah. We're, no, we're walking. No, you're not. We're walking. No, you're not. You didn't say that. And, I'm, and, and what I'm just saying, I mean, I, I, you know, if there is going to be <laughs> yeah, okay. a, a government, you know, it may as well be, we're you walking. know, the, the representatives of the people may as well have the interests of the people in, in mind. We're walking. You have to RP it. I'm using my legs to. <laughs> Your yeah, legs fuse to together and no, I'm just let's, uh, <laughs> let's use our fucking legs to ambulate towards the castle. It was right. even out of geology. It was just an easy A. <laughs> it was the only way I graduated. It's kinda of shocking that like Goblin College has a political science major, but not one for like rock, you know? No, there was one for rock. Oh. It was just about hitting each other with rocks. Oh. <laughs> uh, hey, you didn't take that up? 
<laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm not very physically adept like you are, Gideon. I would have well, got my ass kicked. I would have had much fewer teeth than I have now. It's just like giving the choice between rock and political science. <laughs> like I just can't imagine you opting for political science. You know uh, what I mean? You know, Neil convinced me in our first year. But, oh, that makes more yeah, sense. You know. Welcome, class. I want you to forget everything you know about hitting things with rocks. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Captain, my captain! <laughs> anyway, the point of all this is, is that keep an eye out for all the boots we all saw and fucking owls and anything else that we think is tied to whatever the hell's going on beyond all of this. All right? Hmm. Okay. And it is at this time that you make your way to the entrance of the castle. The castle itself is very clearly tilting to one side as it, the foundation is submerged in the muck and the mire of the Classic. swamp. Um, you notice that the first layer of this castle is actually partially underwater. And you see that where you are walking up to it is a, a bullywug made... Um, bridge and causeway to a stairwell that wraps around the castle and would have gone down to the first layer but you're meeting it about halfway as it goes up just a little bit to an entrance on the second layer of the castle oh. you do see down uh beneath you at the water line that there are uh many pairs of bullywugs in gondolas similar or boats and gondolas similar to the ones that you saw when you made your way in as they are sailing around the swamps and romantic boat rides or just enjoying the night air with their um with their friends or their family and um some of them do seem to notice you and they they point and whisper amongst themselves but none of them try to get your attention as you make your way up the stairwell um towards the castle itself and the noise here is loud. It is filled to the brim with the courtiers of the soggy court. And the energy seems to be quite high. Mm. The idea of a, an opera, a play, and the, the promise of some kind of cook-off, the, this new competition coming to the soggy court called Electrum Chef has really piqued the interest of those that are here. And you you do make your way up the stairs. And as you enter, uh, the guards that are at the door immediately uh, stand to atten attention and jump to the side. They raise their lances and allow you entrance without saying a word. Um, their eyes lingering on the brooch that you still wear on your on your tailcoat that shows that you are a, a friend of the king. And as you enter in, you see that this place is bedecked with gold and valances, valances, how do you pronounce that? Valances? Uh, they're like the hanging curtains. Not another meaning Valencia. of the word. Fuck off. Valances? Valances. Valences. I don't care. But there, there are those everywhere. The there <laughs> are... Um, this is a beautifully decorated Rococo palace. And you're oh, stepping man. out into the ballroom and you see that there are countless... Uh, members of the soggy court, these bullywugs that are in beautiful, uh, beautiful garb as they dance to a multiple piece orchestra at one end. And they, they move this way and that, their outfits far more elaborate than they had been before. And as you enter in, you immediately hear, and we present to you the guests of King Gallup the 19th. That is the current king, right? Yes. Yes, King Gallup the 19th. No. The newly inducted members of the Soggy Court, the heroes of Downfall, and the champions of the arena. Mm. And everyone, everyone stops dancing and they all clap quietly. A few people raise their glasses of champagne and drink to you. Make way, make way, as this caller who has a long trumpet-like instrument begins to play 
play a sound notifying the music to completely stop and everybody parts as you begin to walk through this ballroom and up towards the very end and you see that there is a large dais and atop it are two seats one is large and regal and atop it sits king gullop the 19th as he smiles down at you his outfit is far more gregarious than it had been the last time that you saw him with puffs and frills and ribbons uh he's now wearing a powdered white wig atop his head as snoodle Ooh. in a very similar outfit rests on a, vel- a plush velvet cushion <laughs> to his side and sitting next to him is a creature that looks like it comes from your very nightmares. A toad-like woman hunched over atop a lily pad. Her (laughs) mouth completely agape as her tongue licks out and pulls flies into her her open maw. Her eyes not able to um, stay synchronized as they dart this way and that, looking all over the room at first, almost haphazardly, before you realize that She is moving them individually for the sole purpose of being able to know every little thing that goes on in the room at any given time. You are gazing upon Davlorn of Lightstraw, and that is where we'll end the session. Oh my gosh. Wow. Smash cut to Morgo. I'm so hungry. <laughs> <laughs> That's the sting up. Yeah, yeah. 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 So good. Anybody? Where's my gruel? Where are they? Gobs? <laughs> Smashed flies? Gobs? I'm starved. Thanks for the session, Nikki. My oh, cricket shoot. paste, please. Let's just remember that we don't know, we don't think she like knows who we are and that she's not like a threat. That's right? meta. So, I'm just saying we should all know that. I'm yeah, the level character seven. Even know should know that. I rush her. I guess we're just first. You go for the left eye, I'll go for the right eye. <laughs> we're not done. Oh, it's tricky. <laughs> Torbeck has to kill the Prime Minister of Morris. <laughs> <laughs> <Relax. laughs> <laughs> you you are going to kill the Prime Minister of Morris. You are going to kill the Prime Minister of Morris. What's next? Avengers and chill. What did you say, Andrew Bay? That's the word! <laughs> <laughs> we all scream like Peter yeah. Herman's play yeah. style and then Torbeck kills somebody. Uh, anyway. uh, we're going to do Avengers and chill where we are going to talk about our favorite moments. We're going to talk about theories, of which we probably have many. And most importantly, we're going to answer all of your questions and comments, so don't go anywhere. Uh, and redeem some questions with us. Oh, check out the merch shop. Please check out our Patreon as well. Best ways to support us. We really appreciate how keep the lights on. And uh, we'll be back next week. Yeah. Ooh. Turn our Discord. Uh, we hang out between, se- between sessions. And uh, we'll be at Gen Con if you're into conventions coming out. Okay, with that, let's chill.